Open it to the most high. Open it to the Lord. Open it to the Lord. So tonight's topic is called manhood, roles and responsibilities. Manhood, roles and responsibilities. Okay. So tonight's topic, we're going to be dealing with the men. I need you men to pay close attention. Okay. Understand that thing. Give me that in wisdom, Solomon. Okay. Give me wisdom, Solomon. Wisdom Solomon chapter 1, read verse 5. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 5. Watch this. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of Jesus will flee deceit mm -hmm. and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. Go ahead. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Well, what we're reading here is that King Solomon is explaining the Holy Spirit. It says the Holy Spirit of discipline. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. Okay? Get that in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Messiah. Understand that. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Read that. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 17. Now right. the Lord is that Spirit. Hmm. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, meaning deliverance. The deliverance that we have now is the spiritual one first. The most that God is using his son Christ to give us the spirit of grace to get our minds right in these last days. Read that again. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16. Now the law is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. Okay, give me that in Galatians 5 1. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, right. therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Mm -hmm. And be not intent again with the yoke of bondage. You see that thing? He says, We must stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Because Christ has made us free from the law of sin and death. That, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That goes back to the law of animal sacrifice. Okay? We must not be entangled again with that because he could not make us perfect. So because of Christ's blood, that's why we're here this day. Because of Christ, what he did for us, we have the chance at getting the kingdom. We have the chance at repentance. We must understand that thing because if it wasn't for Christ, we would not be able to come out of captivity. If Christ didn't die for the four tribes of Israel, we would remain in captivity forever. Okay? Now get that in Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. Watch this. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 12 is dead. And they Pray. overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. You see that thing? They gave up the world for the truth. So they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. The only way we're going to overcome brothers and sisters is by the blood of the Lamb. We're not going to overcome by our own will, our own power, our own mind, and our own might. We are only going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Understand that. Read that again. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Come on. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. They love not their lives unto the death. Meaning what? They gave up the world for this truth. You understand? Get that in Philippians. Okay, because the Apostle Paul is, is an example of that. Get that in Philippians. Okay, Philippians chapter 3, Philippians 5, let's start there. Okay, come on. The book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 5. Mm. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew, Come on. Hebrew as touching the law, a Pharisee. Because the apostle Paul was a Pharisee. Okay, go ahead. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the what righteousness. Hold on. He was persecuting the church because he believed what he was doing was right. Because he was taught the land under the stars and the Pharisees. So he believed that. 
You understand? He was doing it out of ignorance. He thought he was doing what was right. Right? Concerning Z, persecuting the church, touching the unrighteous, touching righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. Is uh, touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless because he kept the commandments. Next verse. Go ahead. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Mm -hmm. Ye doubtless, I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my God. You see that thing right there? You see what he said? It says, But what things were gained to me? Those I counted laws for Christ because the Apostle Paul very educated, wealthy. But he says the things that he gained, you understand? He says he counted them all laws for Christ because guess what? He loved not his life unto death. Go ahead. For whom I have suffered the loss of things and do count them but done that I may win Christ. You see what he's saying? He says, but he says what? He is doubtless, I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Because when you come into this truth, you're going to suffer loss of a lot of stuff that you used to but done that I may win Christ. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 again. So we understand what the Apostle Paul, now we understand what John the the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 10. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of Come their on. testimony, they love not their lives unto the dead. Read that again. Read that again. Revelation 12, verse 11 again. Read that again. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. You see that thing is that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. When Christ died, that's how we overcame, and that's how we're going to overcome. You understand? Before he returns. And he says, by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Meaning what? We gave up the world so we may win in Christ. Understand that? That's what the Apostle Paul is saying to us. Okay? Now watch this. We need to understand the roles of responsibility of men in this too. Brothers that are coming in, they say they want to be soldiers for Christ. You understand? You need to understand what you ask people. You need to understand the roles and responsibilities that stand before you. Understand that. Um, get that in Matthew, okay? Give me the book of Matthew real quick. I'm going to show you something this day. Not part of my notes, but guess what? Give me the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 20. Matthew 20, verse 20. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee, Zebedee's children with their sons, worshipping mm -hmm. him and desiring a certain thing of him. So now, this is, um, it is, then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children. So this is their mother. Now she's coming to Christ he says, with her son. She's coming to Christ with her son, okay? Is it desiring a certain thing of him? Go ahead. And he said unto him, What will thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left, in thine kingdom. You see what, you see what she's asking? He says, let, he says, Allow these my two sons to sit on your left and on your right in your kingdom. Right? Meaning the kingdom that's coming upon this earth. Right? But Jesus answered and said, you know not what he asked. He says, you don't and know what you're asking. You don't know what, hold on, wait. He says, you don't know what you're asking, woman. You have no idea what you're asking for, okay? Meaning this is a big ask, okay, come on. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? Mm. And to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, right. we are able. They, meaning the son, they said unto him, we are able. We're going to drink out of the cup that you drink out of. We're going to be baptized in the baptism that you are baptized with. You hear what they are saying? Go ahead. Watch this. Read. And he said unto them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup, 
and be baptized mm -hmm. with the baptism that I'm baptized with. But Rich. to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. But right. it shall be given to them for who it is prepared of my father. Now, ah, that's the heavy statement right there, what I'm trying to say. You see what he's saying? He says, yes, you're going to drink of the cup that I will drink of. Aro, you're going to be baptized with the same baptism. But to sit on my right hand and on my left it is not mine to give. It's what is it? it is given to them. It is given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Mean the most high God is the one that has prepared men that are going to sit on the right hand and on the left of Christ when he sits on his throne. You understand? What's this? Give me that in um, Matthew. Okay, Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. Watch this. This is what Christ said. Okay, the chapter before it. Watch this. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 28. And Jesus said unto Pray. you, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he also shall sit upon mm -hmm. twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So he's talking to the disciples here. He says, ye which have followed me in the regeneration. Meaning what? The regeneration from the beginning of time. When the Lord says, let there be light, you understand? So he says, let they, he that had followed me in the regeneration. Meaning in the past, when we came on this earth, we followed Christ. We kept the commandments. We taught on the feet. You understand? We were the prophets of the most High God. So when we come back, regeneration after regeneration, guess what? We are going to still be following Christ. That's what he's telling you. You understand? So we need to understand this thing. This is the heavy responsibility. It's not a poor job. Understand that thing. Now, watch this thing like this. So I want you to write these things down. These are the, these are the roles and responsibilities that if you come into the truth as a man, you need to understand these things. Okay? These are going to be these are going to be pertinent for you, for your development in this truth, for your life in this truth. Understand that. So one thing we need to understand as men, we've got roles and responsibilities. You understand? So now watch this. Give me now write, write, write this down. The first thing is, as a man in this truth, you must understand you are here to become a preacher. Okay, you're here to become a preacher. That's number one. Okay, the second one is the second secondary is your job is to become a provider. You must understand that the first one is preacher, the second one is provider. Okay, the third one is you must be a protector. That's the third one. Okay, the third one is you must be a protector. Number one. A pro, uh, you must be a preacher, then a provider, okay? Then you must be a protector. You must be a protector, okay? We're following so far. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. okay. And the fourth one, the fourth one is you must be a sacrifice. Mm. That's some heavy stuff here. Number one, because I know Israel is slow. The first one is you are in this truth to become a preacher. Number two, a provider. Number three, a protector. Number four, a sacrifice. Understand it. So we're going to deal with each one. So pay close attention. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 8, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 4. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 8, verse 4. Come on. And to you, O men, I pray. And my voice is to mm -hmm. the sons of men. You see what the Bible is saying? Read that again. Verse 4. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 4. And to you, O men, I come call. On. And my voice is to the sons of mm -hmm. men. He says, and to you, O men, I call. So the Lord calls the men first. Because the men are the leaders. Okay? He calls the men first. So the first point is, we want to deal with being the preacher. Being a preacher. Okay? Being a preacher, you, you, you're, you're prophesying. You are a preacher, you're a prophet, and you are teaching things that are to come. You're prophetic things that are not yet, not yet happened yet, but are going to take place. You also teach about things that have happened before, so that to bring our people into this, to, to connect them to this vibe. Read that again, verse 4, come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 4. And to you, O men, I call, mm -hmm. 
and my voice is to the sons of men. My voice is to the sons of men. My voice is to the sons of men. What is the Lord's voice? Get that in Deuteronomy chapter 27. Deuteronomy 27 verse 10. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. You see, the voice of the Lord our God is to do his commandments. Okay, go back. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 4, Jim. Read. The book of Proverbs chapter 8, verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call. Mm -hmm. And my voice is to the sons of men. And my voice is to the sons of men. So the voice of the Lord that is to the sons of men is his law, statutes, and commandments because the men are the leaders. That's our role. You understand? We the leaders. And our voice the Lord's voice is to the sons of men, the leaders of the nation, the leaders of Israel, the judges of the earth. Okay? Give me that in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 12. Watch this. Isaiah 13 and verse 12. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 13, verse 12. Read. I will make a man more precious than my gold, even a man than mm -hmm. the gold weight of my bed. You see what the Bible is saying? He says, the Lord says he will make the black man more precious than fine gold. That's some beautiful stuff like this. You understand? That's why it says, my voice is to the sons of God, the sons of men. Because he's going to make a man, the man of Israel, the Israelite man, more precious than fine gold. Even the man than the golden word of Ophir. Because Ophir, that's where we got, we got the best gold. So the man called the leaders, he, the Lord called the men first. You don't call the women. He calls the men first. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 and verse 1. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 1. O God of my Father and Lord of mercy, who has made all things with thy word. You see that thing? Who has made all things with thy word. Go ahead. And ordained men through thy wisdom that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou has made. You see that part right there? Who is that? An ordained man. Ordained man through thy wisdom. So the Lord sets up the man. He calls the man first. You understand? That's why it says ordained man through thy wisdom. But before this can take place, guess what needs to take place? We need to understand this thing. Young man coming into this too, this is what you need to understand. Give me the book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Galatians 4 and 1. Read that. We need to understand this thing, especially you men. So this class is for you this day. Watch this. Read that. Galatians 4 and 1. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 1. Now I say that mm -hmm. the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Mm -hmm. Read that again, verse 1. But, There's some heavy stuff right here. Okay, come on. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Because guess what? This is talk about the heirs of God, God's heirs. We talk about the 12 tribes of Israel. But here we deal with men. It says there now that the heir, as long as he is a child, you see that right there? As long as he is a child. When you come into this truth, understand you are a child you don't know that you don't know anything you need to be taught that's the first thing that you need to acknowledge okay it is there's a different nothing from a servant this could because before you can be a leader you can be a preacher you understand of righteousness guess what you must understand how to serve you must be a follower before you can lead anyone you must be you must know how to follow you must know how to serve before you can lead anybody you must learn how to serve how to be a follower Understand that thing, because what I'm seeing in Israel now, and I've dealt with this in the past, I'm still seeing the same demonic things up in here. Some of you brothers, you understand, you're full of the devil, okay? The level of disrespect that I'm starting to pick up for, over, for to the brothers that have been here before you, it will not be tolerated up in here, because I'm seeing that. That means you're not in the spirit, you're full of the state, okay? Read this one again, come on. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 1. Now I say that the Pray. heir, 
as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from himself, though he be Lord of all. Right? But is under two just... from himself. Oh, wrong. No, no, no. I need you to stay with me. He says he differs nothing from a servant, those who be Lord of all. Because we're going to rule the earth. You understand? But before that can take place, we must learn how to serve. Understand this. Watch this. Give me the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 27. I'm going to give you some examples of men that you read about in this Bible, how they came up in this, in this truth. Watch this. Numbers 11, verse 27. Read that. The book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 27. And there ran mm -hmm. a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medan do prophecy in the camp. He says, do prophesy in the camp. They ran, he says, and they read that again, verse 27. Read that right. Come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 27. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medan do prophesy in the camp. So this young man that ran and told Moses that elders and elders and needed they prophesied in the camp. Watch what happened. Go ahead. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, One of his young men. And Joshua, the son of Nun, no, 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 the no. servant that... of Moses. Uh-huh. You see that thing? The servant of Moses. He says, What? Joshua, the son of Nun. The servant of Moses. Because after Moses died, who took over? Joshua took over. Why? Because Joshua, when he was with Moses, he wasn't acting like he knows stuff. You understand? He was a servant. He was a loyal servant. He followed orders. He followed commands. He understand? He understood. Whatever instruction that Moses gave unto him, he followed it to the T. That's what we're reading about it here. That's why you've got the book of Joshua written that the Lord had picked. Read the verse again. Verse 28. Come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 28. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, mm -hmm. one of his young men, Wait. answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid. He says, he says, Joshua was a young man. He says, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. Because what? He was saying they must not prophesy. Why are they prophesying other than me? You understand? But the point is, he says, Joshua, he says what? Joshua was a young man. He was a servant of Moses. He was a loyal servant. Now watch this. Give me Exodus 24, verse 18. Exodus chapter 24, verse 18. Because the things that are written aforetime, they were written for our land. When you are in this truth, because some of you are still, you, you understand, we've been having a discussion. You understand? At camp, you know, when after camp, before camp, you know, sometimes when brothers are teaching, we'll be having like a second and all that. We'll be discussing things. A lot of you, not all of you, but some of you, you don't ask no questions. You always have something to say because you are, you think you learned already. You're not going to learn nothing. I'm going to let you know now. You're not going to learn anything because you don't ask questions. You always got something to say. Just shut the hell up, listen and learn. That's what the Bible does say. Read it again. Exodus 24. Exodus 24 is 18. Read it for me. Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 18. And Moses rose up Ray? and his minister Joshua. You and see that Moses thing? Went... Moses rose up and oh, hold on. Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. You see, Joshua was ministering unto him. He was the one that was helping him. He was one that would carry his armor bed. All of these things. Joshua was following Moses wherever he went to learn as much as he can. Why? Because Joshua was the level was the loyal servant. The Lord put the spirit upon him to learn. You understand? Not to act like he knows something when he don't. Read again, verse 18. The book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 18. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. Come on. And Moses went up into the mount of God. So Moses went into the mount. You understand? He was up there 40 days and 40 nights. Jump down to verse 18. The book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 18. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount mm -hmm. 40 days and 40 nights. You see that thing? So Moses went into the mount 40 days and 40 nights. 
He was he was as he went in the midst of the cloud, the chariot. Now watch this. Give me Exodus 33 verse 11. I'm showing you that Joshua was always with Moses. You understand? Because why are we reading? Because we're reading, we are giving an example of before you can become that creature, before you can become that teacher of Israel, before you can become that leader of Israel, you must learn to be a servant. You must learn how to follow instructions well. Exodus 33 verse 11, read that. The book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. As a man speaketh unto his friend, and he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the mm -hmm. son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. You see that part like this? You see, listen, listen to this. It is by his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. So Joshua was always there. Following Moses around. Why? Because he wanted to learn. You understand? He wanted to learn. That's what he, that his spirit was like there. He did not have the spirit of, I know too much. I'm learned already. I already have an opinion. Get that in the uh, chapter 3. I'm going to show you what, what the Lord says about some uh, opinion. Track chapter 3, verse 24. Watch this. Because I'm, so I'm noticing young men have a law to say. Listen. You're not gonna learn nothing. Me, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna teach you nothing. I'm not gonna break down nothing. What around you? No, because you learn already. You understand? We what you got. Ecclesiastical chapter 3, verse 24. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastical, chapter 3, verse 24. For many Pray. are deceived by their own vain opinion. You see that thing? Many are deceived by their own vain opinion. It's a vain opinion. It's the wicked imagination of your mind. So when you, when we, when you're supposed to be listening, asking questions to understand things, when you always have something to say, you have an opinion that is deceived by your own mind. You're not gonna learn nothing. Okay? The Lord looks at spirits like that. He says, "This one is not gonna learn nothing." And I can tell, this one is not gonna learn nothing. Okay? The most I have is a Understand that. Read that again, verse twenty-four. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter three, verse twenty-four. For many are deceived by their right. own pain of being. Mm -hmm. And an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, because you have an evil suspicion, you think you know better, but you don't know nothing. You understand? You think you know better because you'll be watching some YouTube videos. You don't know nothing. You understand that? Because you have an evil suspicion, that's going to overthrow your judgment. That's what the law is saying. Next verse. Watch this. Come on. Without eyes, thou shalt want light. You see that thing? Prophecy. Without eyes, because your spiritual eyes are not open. You know, your spiritual eyes are not open. Your eyes are wide shut. You understand? It says, without eyes, thou shalt want light. You're not going to have understanding. Go ahead. Profess not the knowledge, therefore, that thou hast not. You see that it's not not just the knowledge that you have not. That's why he says the knowledge that you have not is you is because you have your own vain opinion. You have something to say. Instead of moving like the spirit of our forefathers in the past, you look at Joshua, how he moved. He didn't have a vain opinion. You understand? He said he was a servant of Moses. Now, let's go back. Okay, go back to Galatians 4 and 1. Read that again for me. Galatians 4 and 1. Don't forget the, the, the point now. You understand? As a man in this truth, you understand? Your ascension to manhood, roles and responsibility. Ascension to manhood, roles and responsibility. You must understand, your role is to be a preacher. Okay, understand that? Read that, Galatians 4 and 1. But before you can become that preacher, you can, before you can become that leader, guess what? You must understand, you must be a servant. You must learn how to serve, how to follow. Read what you got. Galatians 4 and 1. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 1. Now I say that right. the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Mm -hmm. Though he be Lord of all. Come on. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Mm -hmm. So the question is why? Why is this servant, this young man, that's what this child, because remember it says, as long as he's a child, that's the key word right there. He says what? But he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. 
Each and every one of you that come into this truth, you destined to become leaders. But guess what needs to happen? You will need to be under tutors and governors. Why? Give me just Corinthians 18, verse 11. This is the reason why. Why you're supposed to be under tutors and governors to govern you, to teach you, to guide you, to teach you. You understand? Again, because you don't know anything. First Corinthians 18, verse 11. Watch this. Read. First book of Corinthians, chapter 18, verse 11. When I was a child, I Read. spake as a child. I understood as a child. Mm -hmm. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, Stop I right put away child. It says, when I was a child, I speak as a child. You see that thing? I understood as a child, I thought as a child. So everything that you're reading here, before we get to the, the, the path to manhood, guess what? Each and every one of you that come into this truth, this is how you think. You understand? You're in this truth now, this is how you still think. You still think as a child. Because some of you think you've grown. You think you're a grown man. No, you're still a child. You are still a child in this truth. You are not grown yet. Read again this letter. Watch this. Because some of you think you're grown men. Nobody can tell you what to do or to help with you there. You understand? Drop dead and die. Go back into the world and do whatever the hell you want to do. But in this truth, in this congregation, we will not tolerate that thing. Because why? We need to understand what the scripture says and apply. Read the verse again. Come on. First book of Corinthians, chapter 18, verse 11. When I was a child, Read. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. Mm -hmm. I thought as a child. Read. But when I became I a man... I thought as a child. I, wait. I thought as a child. I spake as a child. You understand? I understood as a child. I thought as a child. Keep going. Watch this. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. We're going to deal with that. We're going to just the whole point of this, uh, of this class. You understand? When I became a man, I put away childish things. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 18. The mindset of a child. You understand? What is this? Be that fool. Deuteronomy 31, verse 18. Watch this. You know what? Start of the 12. Hmm. Watch this. Deuteronomy 31, verse 12. That's it. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 12. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates. That they may hear and that they may learn. Stop right there. And fear. Hold on. So it says, gather the people together. Who's gathering the people together? The Lord uses men. He raises up men. He uses, sets up leaders to gather the people together in the spirit of Christ. That's what the Lord does. He did it back then. He's doing it today in his last day. Read that part again, verse 12. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 12. Gather the people Go ahead. together, men and women and children and the stranger that is within the gates, that they may hear and that mm. they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe mm. to do all the ways of this law. You see that thing? So that's what the Lord does. The Lord raises up leaders, you understand, to be able to gather the people together in the spirit of Christ. Men, women, children, okay? That they may hear the word of the Lord and that they may learn and do all the things of the Lord that are written. You understand? Watch this. Next verse. Come on. And that their children, which have not known anything, may hear. Stop writing. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I want you to read that slow. Read that verse again. The There's something deep with this verse. I want you to read it. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 18. And that their children, which have not known anything, may hear. May what? May hear. May, no, may talk. They may, may what? May hear. You see that thing? Listening. Listening. You understand? You are a child. You don't know anything. Don't be saying nothing. Ask questions. You understand? If anything, ask questions. But don't come disrespectful because you're going to get checked. The Bible is saying, and that they are children which have not known anything. Children don't know nothing. Children, they don't know anything. They dumb as hell. You understand? Their job is to hear. That's what the Bible is saying. That they may hear. And after they hear, they do what? Come on. And learn. And learn. So they listen so they can learn. 
They're not listening so they can run their mouth. Mm -mm. They listen so they can learn and apply themselves. Go ahead. And learn to fear the Lord your God. As long as he live in the land whither he go over Jordan to possess it. You see that thing? So the Lord always, he always do lead us men to be able to guide the people, to gather the people together and teach them God's law. That is the job. So the heir, as long as there's a child, he's under tutor and governor. That's why they are needed, because why? That heir, as long as the child, he don't know nothing. He needs tutors and governors to be groomed. Understand that. Now watch this. Give me Hebrews 5 and 12. The children don't know anything. And this is what needs to take place. Because children don't know nothing. Hebrews 5 and 12. Watch this. A lot of you young men, you coming into this truth because you win the shopping. You think you know something because you can pull a couple of pieces. No, shut the hell up. You understand? I'm so sick and tired of these young men now. You understand? I'm not up to here. You understand? I'm tired of it. So you know who you is, just get it to get because it will not be tolerated. There's a new program. I'm telling you right now. Read the Bible again. Hebrews 5 and 12. Okay? Start of verse 11. Watch this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 11. Of whom we have many things to say and had to mm -hmm. be uttered. See, he are done of it. Because right now you're spiritually dumb, deaf, and blind. You need your spiritual eyes and ears to be open. You understand? Because right now you see that of here. Because the same scripture keeps repeated over and over. Young men don't want to get themselves right. You have no place here. Just go back into the world and do the thing that young men do. Okay? Read the verse again, verse 11. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 11. Of whom we have many things to say and had to be uttered. See, ye are done of mm -hmm. here. Seeing your spiritually deaf, come and fly. Go ahead. For when, for the time he ought to be teacher, ye have need that one teach you mm -hmm. again, which be the first principle. You see that thing? Of the it says, for, hold on, for the, for the time, for, the, for when, for the time he ought to be teacher. Because guess what? You are groomed to become a teacher. You are groomed to become a preacher, a leader. You understand? It says, for that time that you were supposed to be there, guess what? There's a need for you to be taught again because children don't know anything. That's the point. Go ahead. Ye have need that one teach you a day, mm -hmm. which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and have Come become on. such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Because children need milk. They don't need meat. Children need milk. Get that in First Peter 2 as well. First Peter 2 and 2, don't get the milk. What is the milk that children need? First Peter 22. Okay, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Why? Because you need milk and not strong meat. Read that. First Peter 22. Let's get the milk. Okay, come on. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babies mm -hmm. desire the sincere milk of the way, that he may grow their back. You see that thing? Because for you to be proved to become a preacher, to become a teacher, guess what? You need the sincere milk of the world that you may grow. But if you don't think where I you, 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 you are you are commanded to listen and learn, there's no way that growth will come. You'll memorize a couple of scriptures, but you're not going to grow in the spirit. You'll become and remain in the spiritual medium. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 8. Let's get some examples. You understand? Of a man that understood. For him to grow in this truth, he needed to be taught again. Acts chapter 8. Read the stage. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 8, verse 8. And Philip ran to the truth and had him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest mm -hmm. thou what thou readest? You understand what you read? Do I understand the things that you read? You read in the prophet Isaiah. Do you understand the book of Isaiah? Go ahead. And he said, how can I accept some men should guide me? And he desired mm -hmm. Philip that he would come up and sit with him. You see, that, 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 that's a word right there. He says, how can I accept some men should guide me? Meaning what? You need to, you need to be under two thousand governors. That's what the Lord is saying. It's not a suggestion. That's a command. He says, how can I accept a man should guide me? And he desired, remember, it says, 
desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So he desired the sincere milk of the word, you understand, that you may what? You may grow thereby. So you can understand the book of Isaiah in two season because he needed the milk. Understand that thing. So he understood that. Okay? The same, guess what? Hmm. The same Philip, and no, 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 not, 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 not the Ethiopian unit, not the same, not Philip. But watch this. I'm going to give you some examples. Give me the book of Numbers 27. Okay. But it says it's under 2,000 governors. So you're going to see, read through, it's throughout the scriptures. You're going to start to see a pattern. You're going to see the men that were creating the truth. Guess what they did? They learned, they humbled themselves. They did not act like they knew. They absorbed, they took, they took care of every godly discourse. Now watch this. Give me number 27, verse 15. Moses is seven. Joshua. Let's see what the Lord did in Jews season. Watch this. Numbers. You know what? Before that, give me the book. Give me the book of first Timothy because they have also poorly addressed this thing. Um let me see. Let me see. Um, second, I think it's first Timothy. It might be first Timothy. Hold on a second. Let me see that real quick. Um Yep, I think it's Second Timothy. Get Second Timothy, chapter four, and verse third verse third verse five. Second Timothy four verse five. Second book of Timothy, chapter four verse five. But watch thou Go ahead. in all things, endure affliction, mm -hmm. do the work of endurance. You must May do what? Improve. Do the work of an inventor. Mm -hmm. Make full proof of the ministry. He says, make full proof of the what? Make full proof of the ministry. Now, watch this. Um, there's a speech I want. Uh, oh, please, read that for me. Come on, uh, soldier, I am. Romans 12 verse 7. Yeah, it was on the right, on the bottom. Say that for me. Oh, please, this is a long time. Service 6. Service 6. Read 6 and 7 together. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 6. Having then gifts mm -hmm. differ according to the grace that is given to us. With the prophecy, okay. let us prophesy according to the proportion, proportion of faith. He says, you see what he's saying? He says, having the gift, differing according to the grace that is given to us. You understand? Each of us have a different gift that is given to us. Whether the gift of prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. The amount of faith that is given to you, prophesy according to that. Next verse. Watch this. Oh, minister, let us wait mm -hmm. on our minister. You see that part? Oh, let us wait. Let us wait on our ministry in patience. You understand? Woe unto them that have lost patience. That's what the scripture says in Torah. Go ahead. For he that teaches on teaching. Or he that teaches on teaching. He says, let us wait. You understand? Wait on your ministry. Don't be chachara. Now, give number 27. What's this? Number 27. The CT. The book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 15. Go ahead. And Moses spake unto the Lord, say, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of our flesh, set a man over the congregation. Read that again. Numbers 27, verse 15. One five. One five. The book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 15. And Moses mm -hmm. spake unto the Lord, saying, Go ahead. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. You see what he's saying? He says, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Watch this. Keep going. Which may go out before them, and which may go in before them. 
and which mm -hmm. will read them out, and which right. will bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not a sheep which have no shepherd. You see that thing? So it says, spread the men over the congregation, which may go out before them to lead them, which may go in before them, you understand, to, uh, to protect them. That's why it says, before them, you understand, before them, which may go, he says, which may go out before them, which may go in before them. You understand? So this man is the leader that is being set up, which may lead them out of captivity. That's what leaders do. Leaders lead their people out of captivity. They deliver their people from oppression. That's what leaders do. They raise up other leaders to do the same thing. That's the program of the Most High God. Read again, verse 17. Come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 17. Which may go out for right. them, and which may go in for them, and which may lead mm -hmm. them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord right. be not as sheep which have no shepherd. You see that thing? Because leaders are shepherds over the flock. Understand it. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom mm -hmm. is the spirit, and lay thine hand upon it. Mm. You see that part right there? It says, you see what he's saying? It says, take thee, Joshua. Why is he choosing Joshua out of all the men that were around Moses? Because Joshua was loyal. Joshua was what? He did not have the spirit of, I know too much. <laughs> he was always with Moses trying to learn. Every God will be called. That's what Joshua did. That's why now the Lord is saying, listen, there's Joshua, the spirit is in him. You understand? Help him, guide him, anoint him. Okay? Read, read that again with the key. Come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 18. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, mm -hmm. and lay thine hand upon him. And lay thine hand upon him. Go ahead. And set him before a yes priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. You see what he's telling Moses to do? He says, set him before Eliezer. Eliezer was the high priest. And before all the congregation, that means the congregation must know the same. And give him a charge in their sight. You know what? Give him a command. Give him a position in their sight. Set him as a leader. Go ahead. And thou shalt put some of thine own upon it. That mm -hmm. all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. May be able to listen to him. You understand? Because they listen to Moses. Now Moses is time for him. The Lord is calling him home. Guess what? He said, after you're gone, yes, Joshua is the one that is going to is going to succeed you. So set him over the congregation before their side so that they don't disrespect him. That's what he's saying right there. Now, watch this. Give me the book of um, give me the book of Numbers, chapter six. Read the twenty-two. Numbers six twenty-two. Let's understand what just what just happened. Number six, read verse twenty-two. Watch this. The book of Numbers, chapter six, verse twenty-two. And the Lord spake unto Moses, mm -hmm. saying. Speak unto the speak Come unto on. Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise he shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and Go ahead. the Lord made his you face. See that shine thing? Now on this wait, wait, wait. Hold on. He says, On this wise, you understand, according to the wisdom that is being bestowed upon Aaron, you understand, he says, This is how you are going to bless the children of Israel. Okay, read that part again, verse 24. The book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 24. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Mm -hmm. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Pray. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Uh -huh. Read. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. 
You see that? And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Because guess what? The, 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 you brothers that are coming into this truth, those of you that are sincere, guess what? The same spirit that we got, that same spirit will jump on you as well. But if you think you know too much, oh no, the spirit of Satan will jump on you. And you'll still be convinced that you know better than the people that came before you. Now, watch this. Give me, let's understand, what was Moses? What was Moses? Give me the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 1, verse 18. 2nd Ezra 1, verse 18. Let's see who Moses was. What was he? 2nd Ezra 1, read verse 18 for me. Watch this. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 18. I led you through the sea, and in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. I gave you Moses for a leader. And Aaron Moses for, for a what? priest. I gave you Moses. He says, I gave for you a Moses leader. for a what? You see that part right there? I gave you Moses for a leader. Moses was a leader. The Lord used Moses to deliver the people out of Egypt. That's what leaders do. They deliver the people from oppression. They deliver the people out of captivity. That's what leaders do. And there is other leaders to do the same thing. Savior. Leaders, preachers. Pastors, according to the Lord's heart, they are the saviors of this of, 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 of the of, of in these last days. They are the saviors. Understand it. Read that again, verse 18. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 18. I led you through the sea, and in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. I gave you Moses mm -hmm. for a leader, and Aaron for a priest. He says, I gave you Moses for a leader and Aaron for a priest because Aaron's job was to do what? Their, their job was to teach Israel how to sacrifice and so on and so forth. Understand it. Now watch this. Give me Exodus chapter 7 and 1. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. Exodus chapter 7 and 1. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God fair. Mm. And Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. That's the same thing we just read in second. You see that thing? It says, it says, I see. I have made thee a God to bear. So what are the leaders? They are gods on this earth. Understand that? Leaders are gods. You understand? They are judges. That's what it means when it says God. Goes into judges. Okay? Leaders. Read that again, verse 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to fear, and Aaron thy brother shall be mm. thy prophet. And Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Watch this. Because remember, Moses was a leader. You understand? Moses was a deliverer. Moses was a savior. That's what he was. And he raised up other saviors just like him. You understand? To do the same thing. Their mission. Okay? So the job of the prophet that's the deal. I'm going over the, your roles and responsibilities as men in this truth. When you come into this truth, these are the roles and responsibilities you have to us. So understand that. Now, give me the book of Sarah, chapter 44 and 1. It is Ezekiel 44 and verse 1. You know what? Hmm. Give me the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 20, I think it's 21. Exodus 22 and 28. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 28. Thou shalt not mm -hmm. revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of the people. You see what the gods are? The gods are the rulers of the people. That's who the gods are. The judges, the rulers, the leaders of the people. He says, don't revile the gods, meaning what? Don't be an offense to them. Why? Because your job is to listen and learn. That's your job. Now you are assuming a role that is not for you. You're not there yet, but you're already assuming that role. What's this? Give me the book of Acts, okay? Give me the book of Acts. Give me Acts. Give me Acts chapter 23. Acts 23, start of the street. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 23, verse 3. Then said Paul unto me, God shall smite thee, thou whited boy. For sittest thou to judge me mm -hmm. after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. 
because they will be hypocrites. But watch this. Go ahead. And they that stood by said, Revelest thou God's high priest? He says, he says, Revelest thou God's high priest? He says, Are you reviling God's high priest? Go ahead, next verse. Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the rule of thy people. You see that thing? Thou shalt not speak evil of the rule of thy people. That's what it means when it says, Don't revile the God. Don't speak evil of the rulers that the Lord has set over you. Because some of you, you're still mumbling and complaining until this day. Now watch this. Give me Sarah 44 and 1. Please ask you. Chapter 44, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44, verse 1. Let us now praise mm -hmm. famous men and our fathers that beget us. So this famous man is our fathers that beget us. Okay, come on. The Lord has wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning. You see that thing? He wrote great glory by them. The fathers that came before us, the fathers that beget us, those famous men, David, King Solomon, Joshua, you understand, Moses, so on and so forth. Come on. Such as did bear rule in their kingdoms, mm -hmm. men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Mm. You see that thing? It says men renowned, meaning famous for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Some heavy stuff, man. Go ahead. Leaders of the people by their counsels mm -hmm. and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people. Why and eloquent and eloquent in their instructions. You see what the Bible is saying? It's leaders of the people by their counsel. Because the counselors of the Lord are listening before God's commandments. And by their knowledge of learning good for the people. Because leaders are leaders. They study. They sit down to search the scriptures daily to see whether those things are true. For the benefit of the nation. You understand? It says, wise and eloquent in their instruction. Because leaders instruct the people out of God's law. That's where the instructions are found. That's where the counsels are found in God's commandments. Now watch this. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 18 verse 19. Let's get some examples of those leaders. Of our, of our time, of our forefathers, okay, that we may walk after their footsteps. Read that. Exodus chapter 18. Read verse 19. The book of Exodus chapter 18, verse 19. Hearken now unto my thoughts. I will give thee counsel. And God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to God one. And thou mayest bring the cause mm. unto God. Go ahead. You see what he's saying? He says, I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. God will, give, will be with you if you are, when you are given counsel, you take the counsel. The Lord will be with you. But when you are given counsel, you don't take the counsel or apply it, the Lord will not be with you. Understand that. Read. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shall show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Now that's heavy right there. It says what? It says, shall show them the way in they must walk. Show them how they must conduct themselves. How they make decisions in their life. And the work that they must do. Because we have a great work that we must do. You must be taught how to do the work. You're not going to watch a YouTube video and know how to do it. That's not how it works. Understand that. Go ahead. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people, able men, such as fear God, men of two, hating covetous, mm -hmm. and place such over Go ahead. to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. So now what we're reading here is what leaders they set order, leaders establish order and such and command. They set the people in order. That's what leaders do. You understand? That's what Moses did. That's what we did in here. That's why when Joshua took over, he knew what to do. He knew what the mission was. 
because he understood the work that he needed to do. And guess what? He was groomed. He knew how to follow. Guess what? He knew how to be a leader. Read that again, verse 21. It's amazing stuff. Right? Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 18, verse 21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as we are born, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds. Rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. You see, I think rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. Go ahead. So he's setting up the order. Go ahead. And let them judge the people at all seasons. Mm -hmm. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the bed thee. You see that thing? So, but in order for you to be able to judge the small matters, you need to know the law. You need to be in the scriptures. You need to study. You understand? You need to ask questions of what the things mean so that you don't wing it. We don't know what. Nobody's going to be winging it in, in, in soldiers of Christ. Nobody's going to be winging it. I don't know about the other camp, but guess what? You are not going to wing it. No, no. We're going to do as it is written. Keep going. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to do it. And all these people shall also go to their place in peace. Right? So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father in law and did all that he had said. Because the Lord will allow this thing to take place. The Spirit of the Lord was on, you understand, to make sure that this thing takes place. Go ahead. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them mm. hate over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. So he said to the order. That's what leaders do. They said order. Come on. And they judged the people at all seasons. They had causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. You see that thing? Because they were under tutors and governors. That's why they were able to do that. Now watch this. Give it the book of Exodus. Because once the, the order has been set, guess what? Now they are taught what they, they are, their job is. What is the mission? Get that in Exodus 3, verse 7. Exodus, chapter 3, verse 7. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 7. And the Lord said, Right. I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their souls. You see, this is the problem set. The problem set is Israel is in Egypt. We are oppressed, we are depressed. You understand? We're at the bottom. We are being worn out by Pharaoh. Okay? So that's what we, that's that's where the problem is. That's why you are set up, you are taught, you set up. You now you have taught the mission what the mission is. And the soldier's mission is to do what? The soldier's mindset is to stay on the mission. That is the mindset of the soldier, okay? Don't deviate from the mission of the most high. Go ahead. And I am come down to deliver out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large and unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hattites, the Hamorites, the Perizzites, and the Havites, and the Jebusites. Keep going, that's nice. Read. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression mm -hmm. with the Egyptians oppress them. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, Behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. I have also seen the oppression with the Egyptians oppressed them. You see that thing? Because they were in captivity. Oppressed. Watch this. This is the mission now. Go ahead. Come now, therefore, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. You see what the mission? The mission is, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh, 
to deliver my people, the children of Israel, out of captivity. That's the mission. Leaders, guess what? They set up other leaders. You understand? They teach them and groom them and give them the mission. Their job is to do what? We go out there to deliver our people from captivity. This is not about us. Some of you think this is about you. It's not about you. Just be quiet and sit in some corner somewhere. The hell is this? Now, watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 106, verse 23. Psalms 106, verse 23. Read that for me. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 23. Therefore, he said that he would Read. destroy Had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy him. Because Moses was a what? Moses was a righteous man. He says what? He says, therefore he said that he would destroy them, meaning Israel. Had not Moses, his chosen, Moses was the Lord, the, the leader that the Lord chose. That's why he says, had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his land, lest he should destroy them. That's what Moses, the Moses was, guess what? He had, he developed that reputation with the Most High. So much so that, guess what? He was able to, to do what? To stop rest from befalling our forefathers in the wilderness. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Now give me Joshua chapter 1 verse 1. Joshua 1 and 1. The book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses' minister saying, Go ahead. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Now, I like this, some heavy stuff that is just read. Read that verse 2 again. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 2. Moses, my servant is dead. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, arise. Stop right there. Stop right there. Wait, 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 wait. It says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses, my servant. Remember, Joshua was Moses' servant. Moses was the most like God's servant. Who was teaching Moses? The most like God, of course. Read it again, verse 2. Come on, come on. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 2. Moses, my servant, is mm. dead. Now, therefore, Moses, my servant, is dead. Let me Hold on. Come here, stuff like this. Keep going. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan. Thou and all these people unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Come on. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread, shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Okay, so now the Lord is assuring Joshua that listen, the way I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you, Joshua. Guess what? Because Moses was a leader. He raised up a, he raised up a leader to succeed him. Okay, go ahead. That's why you brothers are here. You understand? Read. Come on. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even at the great river. The, the river Euphrates and all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your port. Come on. There shall not any man be able to stand forth all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Now that's some word of encouragement like this. It says, at the same way I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to fail you, nor will I forsake you. Come on. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance, in, for inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Go ahead. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. 
turn not from it to the right, to the right hand, or to the left, that thou mayest prosper with us forever now goes. You see what he said? He says, don't move to the left or to the right. Stay in the city. You understand? Don't deviate from God's law. That's what the law is telling Joshua, because Joshua was raised up. Now watch this. Now, give me the book of 1 Corinthians 12, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You know what? Before we get there, go back to Galatians 4 verse 1 and 2 again. Galatians 4 verse 1 and 2. Read that again. The book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as mm -hmm. long as he is a child, differeth nothing from self, though he be Lord of all. Mm -hmm. Come on. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed by You see that thing? But he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Because that when was it was Moses' time, it was the time appointed of the father. You understand? But Moses needed to be under what? Moses, Joshua was a child. So he needed to be under Moses, who was what? Who was a tutor and the governor of his life, to govern him, to groom him. You understand? So when I see brothers going outside of what we just said, you are not of the Lord. You are of Satan. When I see brothers, because I see some of you, you are like a recycled demon. You just keep coming up over and over. Guess what? You are not moving in what we read here. You are moving outside of God's commandment. You understand? And this is that spirit, this, that spirit right there, if you don't repent and get your mind right, this is what's going to happen. It's not easy for me. Give me the book of Second Chronicles. I'm going to show you something. Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 1. Okay. Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 1. This is during the time when Joash was the king. Watch this. Read that. Second Chronicles 24, verse 1. Second book of Chronicles chapter 24, verse 1. Joash mm -hmm. was seven years old when he began to reign. So Joash was a child. He was a child that we read in Galatians 4 and 1. He was a child. Go ahead. And he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. His mother's name also was the bear of Beersheba. Read. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. That's the reason why he did that which was right. Get that in Deuteronomy 6 verse 17. He says, He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. So, the only reason why he was able to do that which was right in the sight of the Lord is because he was under tutors and governors. Now, watch this Deuteronomy 6 verse 17. Watch this. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 17. He shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes. Which he has commanded thee. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. You see that part right there? It's the, so it says, and you must do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, which is in verse 17, to keep him of the commandment, he said, his testimony, his statutes, which has commanded thee. When you do that, it says things will be well with you. That's the same thing he told Joshua in chapter 1, verse 8. Now, go back to where you were there. Second Chronicles 24, verse, verse 2 again. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 2. And Joash did mm -hmm. that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. So the only reason why he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord is because Jehoiada the priest he was the governor. He was the tutor because Joash was the child. He didn't know nothing. So he needed Jehoiada the priest to guide and groom him so he can become one. He can be do right in the sight of the Lord for the sake of the people. But watch this. Now, as, as long as he was under Jehoiada the priest, this was his mindset. Read verse 4. Come on. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 4. And it came to pass mm -hmm. after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. You see that thing? His mind was on the, repa the reparation of God's law. I mean, the reparation of God's house. The 12 tribes of Israel. That's why it says, 
he was uh, he says what uh, and it came to pass after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord as long as he was under Jehoiada's feet. His mind was on the restoration of God's people. That was his mindset. But watch this. Jump down to the 16. Okay. Watch this thing right here. Read this. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 15. And mm -hmm. Jehoiada was old and was full of days when he no, no, died. No, 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 no. Come on. Wait. wait. What are you reading, bro? Come on. Your reading, bro, is messing me up. Okay. Read Second Chronicles 24, verse 16 again. Come on. Apologies, sir. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 15. But Jehoiada waxed old and was full of days when he died. And 130 mm -hmm. years old was he when he died. So Jehoiada, he grew old. You understand? He was 130 years old when he died. So now Jehoiada is old and he died. Okay? Watch what happened now. Jehoiada is no longer there. Joach is no longer seven years old. He's grown now. Watch this. Go ahead. And they buried in the city of David among the kings. Mm. Because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. You see that thing? He done good. He says he done good in, in Israel. So he was about, he was nation minded. That's what Joe jo Hira the priest, he was nation minded. He says he did good in Israel, both towards God, to the most high God, he glorified the Father, and towards his house. He took care of him. He was a provider. Hmm. Heavy stuff. Keep going. Verse 17. Great. Now, after the death of your idol, came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king had them mm. unto them. So now, these right here, these are the snakes that are hiding in the grass right now. Within, it says, now after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. But were they really worshipping him? No. They wanted, they were waiting their turn to say something. You understand? Because the whole time when Jehoiada the priest was there, they couldn't say something. They couldn't say nothing to the king. Because Jehoiada the priest was the, was the what? Was a wall of defense. He was protecting Israel, protecting the king with his wisdom to make sure that the nation of Israel don't get killed because of Joash and because of these wicked negroes that was in the congregation just buying their time to do what? To destroy from a thing. It happened back then, surely it will happen this day. Keep going. Watch this. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers and served groves and I. And wrath came upon mm. Judah and Jerusalem for their trespass. For this, their trespass. So now, after Jehovah the priest died, they started, they went into idolatry. They started worshipping other gods. Because when Jehovah the priest was there, because remember, he said, he done good in Israel towards God and towards his house. So he was about the father's business. Jo Joash, he was not. He was only good to Israel because Jehoiada the priest was over him. You understand? Go ahead. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against him, but they would not give ear. They would even give ear even when the prophet was sent to correct the issue. Watch this. Go ahead. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus says mm -hmm. God, why transgress he the commandments of the Lord, that he cannot prosper? Because he has forsaken God, he mm -hmm. has also forsaken you. You see that part right there? So now the Spirit of the Lord, he says, it came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest. Now, this is the son now. You understand? The son now, the Lord put the spirit upon him to correct the evil that was taking place. You understand? That's why they were not prospering. But watch this. Keep going. Verse 21. Watch this. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. Now, you cannot make this up. 
You cannot make this up. It says, they stoned Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, at the commandment of King Joash. The same Joash that was groomed, tutored, and governed by Jehoiada the priest. You understand? He's the one that killed the son of the men that took care of him. You can that that Negro story. Betray it. You understand? So guess what? If you go outside of Galatians 4, verse 1 and 2, and all the examples that we read, this is your faith. This is how you are good. This is what you're going to do. It's not if, it's not maybe, it's going to take place. Keep going. First Joash, the king, remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada, his father, had done to it. But he slew his mm. son. But mm. slew his son. And when he died, he said, The Lord looked upon it and required it. Now he's saying, the Lord looked upon what I did, and the Lord required. Did the Lord require? Was the Lord upon him? No. The spirit of the Lord was not. He had the devil on him. Because what? He was an ungrateful, wicked Negro. You understand? So what I'm showing you is, what happens is that some of you brothers, you are being raised up, okay? But guess what? That concerns two things. You see those that are about the truth and those that are not. But they are just sitting in front. And that's exactly what those princes did when they came to draw to draw as the king after Jehoiah died. So what I'm showing you is the minute you move outside of Galatians 4, verse 1 and 2, this is your faith. This is the things that you are moving in right now. This is the spirit you're rolling in. So you cannot be a preacher in Israel. You cannot be a leader in Israel. Why? Because you're not fit for that. That's not the spirit you're rolling in. You are conditioned and groom to destroy from within. You understand? So you are the enemy of God's enemy. Guess what? You are the enemy to this too. Understand that. Now, watch this. Give me um, the book of First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Do I want to go there now? Um, yep. Give me that in uh, First Corinthians 12 verse 1. I want you to read this quick. First Corinthians 12 verse 1. We're going to jump to verse 4. First book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 1. Now, concerning mm -hmm. spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Uh, don't, the Lord is the, the apostle Paul in the spirit of Christ. Says, don't be ignorant of the spiritual gifts. But I'm bringing this out. I'm bringing this out because as a preacher, we all have, the Lord will be so accord as spiritual gifts, some more than others. But guess what? Be content with what the Lord is giving you. Jump down to verse 4. Come on. First book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Mm -hmm. Come on. And there are differences of administrations, but the same law. Right. And there are diversities of operations, but there is the same God which worketh all in all. Ray. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with us. To profit the congregation, to profit the body, to profit the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Go ahead. So, that's it, John. That's it, John. so now, wait, wait. So understanding all that, you can do that on your own. Understanding all that, guess what? First must be this one thing. When you understand all that, this is what now you begin to do. Because we read Moses was, was groomed as a leader by the Most High. He groomed Joshua to groom others after him. You understand? So guess what? The, likewise, the mission was taught to Moses. He taught the mission to the rest of the nation of Israel, the men that he set up. Watch this. First Maccabi 3.43. Read that. First book of Maccabi. Chapter 3, verse 43. They said one to another, let us restore the decay estate of our people and let us fight for mm -hmm. our people and the sanctuary. Mm. You see that? So this is the mission. We're here to restore the decay estate of our people because our people are in the, in the decay state. Mentally, spiritually, and physically, our people are in a decay state. And when we are restoring the decayed, the decayed mind of our people, 
We are also restoring, we are fighting, we are, by so doing, we are fighting for the minds of our people and the sanctuary. Understand that the spiritual house that the Lord is using us to daily it up. Now watch this. Give me first Maccabees 4, 41. Because during the time of Judah Maccabee, when he was restoring the decayed state of our people, he guess what? This is what he understood as a leader. Watch this. First Maccabees 4, verse 41. Watch this. First book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 41. Then Judas appointed mm -hmm. certain men, certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress until he had cleansed the sanctuary. Right. Until he had cleansed the sanctuary. Go ahead. So he chose priests of blameless conversation. Such as stop a right in the Stop, 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 stop. Whoa, whoa, hold on. I need you to read this for two again. Stay with me. Come on. Apologies, sir. First book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 42. Read that again. So, so he chose priests mm -hmm. of blameless conversation. He chose priests of blameless conversation. So he had to help pick these men, just like Moses did in Exodus 18. You understand? You understand? Officers over thousands, officers over hundreds and fifties and tens. So on and so forth. So it says he chose priests of blameless conversations, such as what? Such as had pleasure in the law. Such as had pleasure in the law. Now, go back to Second Ezra chapter one verse eighteen. I'm going to show you something. Second book of Ezra chapter one verse eighteen. I led you through the sea, mm -hmm. and in the beginning. Gave you a large and safe person. I gave you Moses for a leader and Aaron for a priest. You see that part right there? I gave you Moses for a leader and Aaron and Aaron for a priest, meaning for a prophet. Watch this. Go back to first Maccabees 4. Read verse 43 now. Thank so you. remember, what was Judah Judah Maccabee? Judah, hold on. Judah Maccabee was a leader. So what did he do? He said, he said men with different, for what? To assign them a different operation, i.e. the priest. You understand? That knew the law. Sacrifices and so forth to do. Of course, his job was to deliver the people out of oppression. It doesn't mean he didn't know the law. No, I don't mean that. He knew the law. But there's differences in administration in the body. So he was setting order. Or oh, watch this. Keep going. Read that. First book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 43. Who cleansed the sanctuary and bear out the defiled stones into an unclean place. Remember, this is during the, this is what, this is the. Lost my bearing, sir. First Maccabees, chapter 4, read verse 43 again. Oh, praise the sir. First book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 43 who cleanse the sanctuary and bear out the defiled stones into an unclean place. Right. And when they consulted what to do with the altar of burnt offerings, which was profane, right. they thought it best to pull it down, lest it should be a reproach to them because the heathen had defiled it. Wherefore, they pulled it down. So they pulled it down. They pulled the altar of burnt offerings and so forth because the heathen had defiled, meaning the Greek, with pork, orgies, and so forth. Go ahead. And they laid up stones in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with that. You see what he's saying? Until... They should be what? Until they should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. The point I'm showing you is, Judah Maccabee understood that. He understood that there's certain things that there was not revealed unto them yet. You understand? Until the prophet, the Lord will what? Will raise up more prophets to deal with these issues after they are gone. You understand that? So he understood that. So I need you men to understand this thing. Okay? Now, Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians, okay? 
Give me Ephesians 4, verse 11. The reason why there's these differences of administrations, guess what? Is for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the benefit of the body. So as a prophet, as a leader, you are, you are, you are being groomed to become a leader. These are things that you need to understand. Okay, go ahead. Ephesians 4, verse 11. The, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles mm -hmm. and some prophets and some evangelists really? and some pastors and hmm. teachers. Because all these differences of administration, guess what? The apostles now, that's higher level, and prophets, meaning they understand the prophecies, and evangelists, they travel, they go to different places to teach the gospel. That's evangelism. And pastors and teachers. We need all that. Okay, go ahead. For the perfecting of the saints, for the mm. work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Because it's about Christ, it's not about us. Go ahead. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Because this right here, it takes time. It says what? Until we all come in the unity of the faith, the faith of Christ, of the knowledge of the Son of God, we must understand the scripture in the spirit of Christ, unto a perfect man, because that's going to lead us unto perfection, unto the measure of the special of the fullness of Christ. That comes with age. It takes time to get there. Why is this necessary? Next verse. Go ahead. That we henceforth be no more children, mm. tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Okay. Read that Ephesians 4 verse 14. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, mm. whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You see what he's saying? So now, the reason why this is necessary to, for you to be groomed into an apostle, to be groomed into a prophet, to be groomed into an evangelist, a pastor or a teacher, is so that what you henceforth, and that we henceforth be no more children. Because children are what? They are tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Because you don't have root yet. You don't have root yet. You are unstable. You understand? You rest in the script. So that's what he's saying right there. Now, give me the book, Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Mm -hmm. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Read. Really? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a what? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How are the people going to hear about the most High God whom they have not believed, in whom they have not heard, except a preacher be sent to them, a teacher, a leader, an apostle, an evangelist, a pastor, to teach them God's laws. Okay? Get that in Isaiah 30 verse 20. And this is where they're going to be found. Isaiah 30 verse 20. Watch this. Isaiah 30 verse 20. Hold on. They are going to be found on the street and they are going to be found in the sanctuary as well. Because right now, this is a sanctuary. Okay, come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Mm -hmm. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. But your eyes are going to see your teachers, your preachers. You're going to see them. You're going to hear the word of the Lord from them. Go ahead. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. Because guess what? You are walking in the wrong direction. But the in it. Though when you go to the left or go to the right, the pastors, the teachers, the true teachers of the Lord, they will be found in the seat corners. They're going to teach you the right way as it is written according to the Holy Bible because they'll teach you God's laws. Okay? Read Ecclesiastes 
chapter 12, read verse 9 for me. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 9. Come on. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. You see what the preacher did? The preacher, the preacher is supposed to be wise according to God's laws. He says he still taught the people knowledge. God's commandment. Okay, go ahead, verse 10. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. Mm -hmm. And that which was written was upright. Even words of truth. Even words of truth. So the preacher found acceptable words in the laws of God. You understand? It says what? Even the words of truth. That's what he taught. That's what preachers are supposed to teach. Words of truth. God's law. Right? The words of the wise are as gold. Mm -hmm. And as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies. Mm. Which are given from one shepherd. Which are given from one shepherd. We know who the shepherd is. Christ, the Messiah. He is the chief shepherd. Okay, but he's also setting up shepherds also in these last days. Preachers, leaders, teachers, apostles, evangelists, you understand? That's what the Lord is doing this day. Savior, that's what the Lord will be doing. Okay, now, watch this. Give me Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 3. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3. Read that. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 15, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Now for a long season, Israel has been without the true, the true God. And without a teaching priest. Mm. And without the law. You see what he's saying? is that for a long season, Israel has been without the true God. We've been in captivity. We've been in South Africa for over 500 years. You understand? It says, Israel has been for a long season, we've been without a true God and without a teaching priest and without law. That's why the Lord says he will call the men first, they will become the teachers and the preachers. Why? Because for a long season, we didn't have that. That's why we destroyed as a nation right now. Watch this. But we're coming back. The Lord is bringing us back. Now, give me that book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 15. Jeremiah 3, verse 15. Read that. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. You see that thing? Not according to seminary schools. Not according to cemetery schools where TV gates and them go. No. According to God's heart. According to this Bible. Read. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what they will teach the people. Knowledge and understanding. That's what the Lord, that, that's the type of teachers or preachers that the Lord will raise up in these last days. So, guess what? This is what you under, this is your role and your responsibility as a preacher. Because as a man, you must understand, number one, you are called to become a preacher, a leader, but you must be groomed on this why. Understand it. Let's get to the next point now. The next point is, as a man, your role, your ascension to manhood, your role and responsibility is to become a provider. Now, we're going to use the scripture that we read earlier on. Get, go back to Second Chronicles, chapter 24. Read verse 16 again. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings, because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. You see that this is the mindset of our forefather, Jehoiada the priest. He says he was buried among kings. This is some heavy stuff. Mm. But you see, he says, but because he had done good in Israel. When you do good in Israel, you're going to be buried among kings. You understand? When you do good towards the most High God, you're going to be buried among kings. You do good towards your house, you're going to be buried among kings. Because why? You're nation-minded. You are a family man. You love the Lord. You see this thing? Beautiful stuff. Because our forefathers, yes, they were leaders. Yes, they were men of war. Yes, they went to war. But guess what? 
the thing that fueled them was what the mission was, the spirit of the Lord that was upon them, but they were also family men. Understand that? They were also family men. They care about their sons and their daughters. Now watch this. Get that in 1 Timothy 5, verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. Because before we actually go there, what I want you to understand is that as a preacher, actually I needed to mention this. As a preacher, you must understand it's about self, meaning what? You being developed and groomed. Once you're developed and groomed, now you become about nation. You become nation-minded. But you must be taught to, be, to, uh, to get yourself right, to get your mind right. And then once your mind is right, guess what? Your focus will be upon your nation. So as a preacher, you think it's about self when you come into this because the Lord calls you. Then after that, you learn about the laws of the Most High God. And now you learn how to be what? How to be a preacher for your nation. To raise up other leaders just like yourself as you have been raised when you, when you call in. Understand that. Now, as a provider, you must know how to provide for yourself. And not only that, you must then, now, now that you know how to provide for yourself, you will know how to provide for your nation. Understand that. Now, 1 Timothy 5 and 8. Watch this. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But if any provide not for his own, and especially, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You see that thing? What we're reading here, the example we read in Second Chronicles with our forefather, Jehoiada the priest, it says, if any provide not for his own, meaning for his own nation. That's why it says he did good towards Israel, towards the Lord, and towards his own house. So it says what? Read that again, verse 8. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 8. Go ahead. But if any man provide not for his own, uh -huh. and especially for those of his own house, mm. he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. So you must provide for your own nation, you understand, especially those of your own house. That's your wife and your children, okay? It says you've denied the faith, meaning you've denied Christ, and you are worse than a non-believer. You are worse than somebody who don't believe, believe in God. That's what the Lord, that's what the Bible is saying. Now, watch this. Get the book of Genesis, page to the page. Let's see where the Apostle Paul gets it from. Genesis 30, verse 30. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 30, verse 30. Mm -hmm. For it was little which thou hadst before I came. Go ahead. And it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. Mm -hmm. And now, when shall I provide for mine own house also? It says, when shall I provide for mine own house also? Because guess what? Before Jacob could know how to provide for his house, he knew how to provide for himself. You understand that? So because when you're providing for yourself, when you come into the truth, you're learning how to provide for yourself. Before you can provide for yourself, there's things that you need in order for you to provide for yourself. So that's rehearsal for how you're going to provide for your nation. That's rehearsal on how you're going to provide for your wife and your children. There are steps to this. Now watch this. Um, give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 19. Watch this. Now, we're going to deal with self. That's why Jacob said, how shall I provide for my own house also? Why? Because he first knew how to provide for himself. Because he worked for Laban. So he was providing for himself. So he got paid. He got because what? Back then, the way when wealth was measured in what? In livestock and land that you got. That's the true wealth, by the way. You understand? Now, read that. Uh, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 19. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding. Uh -huh. And exalted them to honor that hold her fast. You see that? It says wisdom reigns down scale. You got your wisdom when? When you were learning and being grown to become a preacher. Now that you have the wisdom, guess what? That wisdom is going to rain down scale. That scale, guess what? 
there's you need, now you have to have skills because now you need to provide for yourself before you can provide for yourself you need to have skills because those skills going to get you access to a job then you get paid now you know how to what you know how to do budgeting buy groceries get a house to live in you understand hmm i'm getting to those things watch this um give me wisdom of solomon chapter 7 verse 22 wisdom of solomon chapter 7 Verse twenty-two. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven, verse twenty-two. Go ahead. For wisdom, which is the work of all things, taught me. You see that? It says wisdom, which is the worker of all things, including what skills. So wisdom is the one that is the worker of things, including giving you skills. Okay, go ahead. For in her is an understanding spirit. You're gonna have understanding of what type of skills you've got, what type of skills you need to develop within yourself to be a benefit to yourself and to your nation, and eventually your house, which is your wife and your children. Go ahead. Holy. Hmm. One only. Come on. Manifold. Subtle. Lively. Clear. Antifile, mm -hmm. plain, not plain. subject to hurt. You see that thing? It says it's plain. It's plain and not subject to hurt. Why is it plain? Because as a leader, you understand, as a provider, you learn to be a leader. Leaders must have a vision. So for you to know how to provide, you need to have a vision for who you're providing for and how much you need to provide for them. Starting with self, your nation, and your house. Right. Loving the thing that is good, mm -hmm. quick, which cannot be let it, ready to do good, which cannot be stopped, and is always ready to do what to do good, keeping of God's laws, application of God's commandments. Now, watch this. Give me Proverbs twenty-nine verse eighteen. Proverbs chapter twenty-nine verse eighteen. This is the mindset of, of you men as a provider. This is the mindset you have to have. We, you understand? Because that's the second pillar. You must be a provider. Read that. Proverbs 29 verse 18. Read that. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. Go ahead. Where there is no vision, the people perish. You see that? Where there's no vision, you, the people that you lead, your nation that you're supposed to teach, your house that you're supposed to take care of, they are all going to perish. Go ahead. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Because if you keep God's laws, you're going to be happy because you will understand the vision and the mission of that vision. Now watch this. Now, as, 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 a, as a provider, you have to have vision. That means you have to have goals. You need to set short-term goals, medium-term goals, and long-term goals. You need to have those things unlocked. You understand? You have to set smart goals. You must set smart goals. I'm going to use an acronym, okay? SMART goals. S-M-A-R-T. SMART goals. The first one is, the S is for, the, the, the goal must be specific. That's the S in SMART. The S stands for that your goal must be specific. That's why it says you must what? You must have a vision. Your goal must be specific. So short-term goals, three to five years. Those are short-term goals. Medium-term goals, five to 10 years. Those are medium-term goals. Long-term goals, 10 to 20 years plus. That's your long-term goal. But in all of the spheres, Short, medium, and long term, they must all be specific. You understand? All of them must be specific. The second, the second letter in the SMART goals is your goals must be measurable. You must be able to measure the, the, your goal. You must be able to measure those goals, whether it be short, medium, or long term. It must be measurable. You must be able to know how long this goal is going to take you. You must be able to measure whether it's be being successful or whether it's a failure. You must be able to measure this goal. You understand? The third 
is that your goal must be achievable. Your goal must be achievable and attainable. Yeah, that's the A in SMART, okay? The next thing is, your goal must be relevant. It must be relevant to what? To you and to your nation and to your family. It must be not be out of time. It must not be out of work. It must be relevant, okay? Lastly, your goal must be time bound. You must, be, you must have a deadline for this goal to be achieved. That's why you must have short, medium, and long-term goals. That goal must be time-bound. It must not be open-ended. You understand? Read that again, Proverbs 29, verse 18. Let me repeat the acronyms again. You must set SMART goals. S, the goal must be specific. The M, your goal must be measurable. The A, your goal must be achievable. The R, your goal must be relevant. The T, your goal must be time-bound. There must be a deadline to this goal. So that's why you must have a vision. That's why you must set smart goals. Get that? Proverbs 29 verse 18. The book of Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. Go ahead. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Mm -hmm. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Because the laws of God give you wisdom. You understand? God's law gives you wisdom to, for you to do what? To set smart goals. You must set smart goals. Now watch this. Now I'm going to give an example of that. I'm going to give some examples. Okay. Now I'm going to give, I'm going to use one of our forefathers. We understand? He was able to set smart goals. He had a vision. Give me the book of Genesis 41. You see, I love this forefather right here. Our forefather Joseph. Watch this. I'm going to show you how he set smart goals. Genesis chapter 41. We're going to start at verse we need to understand that the goal must be specific, right? Genesis 41, verse 26. All I want is 26 and 27. Genesis 41, verse 26. Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 26. Mm -hmm. The seven good kind are seven years. Mm. And the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. The dream is one. You see what he's saying? It says the dream is one. Read that again. The book of Genesis chapter 41, verse 26. The seven good kind are seven, e seven years. Mm -hmm. And seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. The dream is one. So now, you see what Joseph is doing here? He's explaining the dream to Pharaoh, what it means. He's been specific of what the dream actually means. Read again verse 26 so we understand this thing. The book of Genesis chapter 41 verse 26. Go ahead. The seven good kind are seven years. And the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. You see what he's saying? The seven good kind, meaning the good cattle, are seven years. The seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. He says the dream means the same thing. Keep going. Watch this. The seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. Mm -hmm. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. Shall be seven years of famine. You see, now, the Joseph is, is being specific about the problem set. It's not vague. It's to the point. It's specific. That's what Joseph is showing us here in the spirit of Christ. Now watch this. The next thing is the dream must be measurable. You understand? Genesis 41 verse 29. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 41 verse 29. Come on. So, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. You see what he's saying? He says they, they're going to come seven years of great plenty throughout the land of Egypt. Because there were the good kind, meaning the seven good cattle, you understand? And the seven good years. That represents the seven years of plenty that will befall Egypt. Okay, go ahead. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. Mm -hmm. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. So now Joseph is saying, listen, 
This famine right here is going to consume the land that it comes after the seven years of plenty. Okay, so he's measuring the, the seven good years, how long it's going to take, because it is measurable. It was specific, not only that, but it was measurable. He was able to tell how long the, seven, the, the plenty will be and how long the lack will be. It was measurable. Go ahead. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of mm. that famine following. Read. For it shall be very grievous. It shall be very grievous. It's measurable. He can tell you, say, listen, based on these years, seven years of plenty, then after that, seven years of nothing, famine, drought. There will not be food. Okay, come on. We're going to read down to verse 32. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. Mm. It is because the thing is established by God. And God will shortly bring it to pass. And God will shortly bring it to pass because the Lord gives you specific of the things that he will do. Now watch this. The first thing is the dream must be achievable. The, the goal must be achievable. It, has, it, must, it must not be a pipe dream. It must be what? It must be a smart goal. Not dream. Smart goal. Because jo Joseph here was able to interpret the dream according to the scriptures. And guess what? There was seven years of plenty, seven years of famine, and Egypt was well taken care of because of what? Joseph, he, I was able to interpret that dream into a smart goal. You see this thing? Hmm. Heavy stuff. Now give me Genesis 41 verse 33. This, this goal must be achievable. Genesis 41 verse 33. Watch this. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. You see what Joseph is saying now? That, that for, in order for this goal to be achievable, we need to set order. We need to set up smart people to be able to handle this matter. Not smart, wise people to, be, to, to deal with this matter. That's what Joseph is telling Pharaoh to do. He said, listen, you need to set officers to be able to manage this business. So, so that it's achievable. We know it's specific, it's the specifics of this goal. Number two, we know the measure of this goal. We know how long it's going to take. Now, in order for it to be achievable, we need to set, so we need to set some ground rules. How is it going to be achieved? Keep going. Let foul to this and let him appoint officers over the land. Mm -hmm. and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. You see what he's saying? He said, listen, once you set up these officers in Egypt, their job is to do what? He says, they're what? He says, they're going to take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. Was it achievable? Yes, because during the seven years of, of plenty, they were able to what? To save up because they had plenty. So was it achievable? Yes, it was achievable. Because Egypt was in the, the first seven years of its plenteous. Understand it. Now, the third thing is, it must be relevant. The goal must be relevant. Genesis 41, verse 35 now. Watch this. Verse 35. Mm -hmm. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come. Mm-hmm. And lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh. And let them keep food in the cities. You see what he's saying? It's relevant. Why is it relevant? It's because during that time, Egypt had plenty. They could not do it when Egypt had nothing because it was not going to be relevant. So they did it now because it was relevant. Read on. Now that's it on that. The next thing is, it must be time bound. You understand? Next verse. Read verse 36 now. Verse 36. And mm -hmm. that food shall be forestored to the land against the seven years of famine. Mm. Which shall be in the land of Egypt. That the land perish not through the famine. You see that it was time bound. For seven years, this is what you're going to be doing. And for those seven years, we're going to save the fifth part of all the crops that we've got. 
So it was specific. Was it achievable? Yes, it was achievable. Let's get there. Genesis 41 and verse 54. Watch this. Verse 54. And mm -hmm. the seven years of death began to come. Mm. According as Joseph had said, and the death was in all the land, was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. You see that? So because what Joseph put a smart goal together, you understand? He said a smart goal. The goal was a smart one. You understand? It was specific, it was measurable, it was achievable, it was relevant, and it was time bound. And when the famine hit, guess what? It, it, it was shown that that goal was, was what? Was successful. Okay, it was a success. Go ahead. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Mm. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, go unto Joseph, what he saith to you, do. He says, what Joseph says to you, you must do it. Go ahead. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine was so in the land of Egypt. But guess what? Egypt had plenty during that time. Go ahead. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn. Because that the famine was so in all lands. The, the famine was so in all lands. You see what he's saying right there? So what I'm showing you is, listen, Israel is not smart. When they come up with this acronym, they get it from the Bible. Understand that thing. The most High God just had to open our spiritual ears, eyes to see what's going on. But what I'm showing you is, as a provider, you must have a vision. You must, have, you must set smart goals. Your goals must be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Understand that thing. That's what the Lord is teaching us. That's what the Lord is teaching us. For you to become a provider. But for you to become a provider, you must have skills. And though the, 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 your skills, they fall under the smart goals that you set. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Acts. Let's get some specifics because for you to be able to get the skill, you must develop your skill. You understand? Because you have the wisdom now to know, okay, I need skills. I need a trade. You understand? For me to be able to get a job, you understand? Or that to open a business so I can sustain myself, my nation, and my family. Understand? Now give me Matthew, give me Acts chapter 18 verse 2. Acts 18. Let's see what our forefathers did. Watch this. Acts chapter 18, verse 2. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 2. Go ahead. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with mm -hmm. his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. Go ahead. And because he was of the same craft, mm -hmm. he abode with them and wrote. For by their occupation, they were tent makers. You see that? For by their occupation, their trade, they were tent makers. You see that? They had skills. Those skills were specific. So they needed to learn that trade, how to make tent. You understand? They needed to understand that skill. They needed to learn it to develop themselves, to improve their skill set. Likewise, in Israel, brothers and sisters, you need to develop your skills. You need to be able to improve your skills so you can get paid better, so you can be able to be, sustain yourself, sustain your nation, and sustain your family because we are in captivity. This is survival mode, okay? Now, give me Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Because our forefathers, they had skills. Likewise, we must do the same thing this day. Of Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Mm -hmm. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not this the carpenter's son? They talk about who? Christ. Who was his father? Joseph. Not his uh, stepfather, his, his 
real father who slept with his mother and he was born. He says, is not this the carpenter's son? So Joseph was a carpenter. He had skill. Okay, go ahead. Is not his mother called Mary? Mm -hmm. And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas. You see that? James, Joseph and Simon and Judas. So guess what? Joseph was a carpenter. He was able to do what? To take care of his nation and his family. Understand that. Give me that in Sirach chapter 38, verse 24. Sirach 38, verse 24. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38, verse 24. Go ahead. The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. Mm. And he that hath little business shall become wise. You see what he's saying? The wisdom of a learned man. Because guess what? You are a preacher now. You are a pastor. You are a, you are a teacher. You are a prophet. Right? Guess what? You've got wisdom. You've learned. Now that wisdom is going to give you skill. Because it says what? Cometh of opportunity of leisure. Because now that you have skills, you realize that now, guess what? You need to get job opportunities now. Because now you've, that you've, got, you've got wisdom, which gives you skills. And when you develop those skills, guess what? You start to look for opportunities now. Job opportunities. Go ahead. It says, and he that has little business shall become wise. When you have little business, guess what? You develop skills so you can have more business. Understand that thing. You must be able to have skills and, be, and have them developed so that you can start to look, op start, that opportunities can start looking for you. Watch this. Read verse, jump down. Uh, jump down now to verse, read verse 27 for me. Verse 27. So every carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night and day, and they that cut and grave seals, and are diligent to make perfect imagery and watch to finish a work. No, no. No, 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 no. Read that right. Read verse 27 again. Apologies, sir. The book of Ecclesiasticus, the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38, verse 27. So every right. carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night and day, and they that cut and grave seals, and are diligent to make great variety. Mm -hmm. And give themselves to counterfeit imagery and watch to finish a work. Because they've got skill. You know, one is a carpenter, one is a workmaster. Their job is to do what? Is to make, is to give to themselves counterfeit image because one is a carpenter, another one is a workmaster. He says what? They, to watch to finish a work. They start the work, they finish it because they've got skill to do so. Because wisdom gave them that. Next verse. Go ahead. The smith also, sitting by the anvil, mm. and considering the iron work, the vapor of the fire wasteth his flesh, right. and he fighteth with the heat of the furnace. The noise of the hammer and the anvil is ever in his ears, and his eyes Look still upon the pattern of the thing that he maketh. He setteth his mind to finish his work and watcheth to polish it perfectly. Because now this goes into the brother that works with iron. They are wealthy. You understand? They work with iron. So it says what? Their job is to what? Is to work. They set their mind to finish the work and watch to polish it perfectly. Because they've got skills. And skills need to be developed. You understand? Yes, wisdom will tell you that you must get skills, but you must develop those skills. You understand? So we're going to provide tools in Israel for men and women to develop skills. Understand that thing. So now watch this. Give me, before we go there, let me see, let me see. Now give me the book of um, 2 Thessalonians, okay, chapter 3. Because we touched on this on the previous slide, okay? But I just want to go over it again because it's relevant, you understand? Because now that you've given, you have your skills are developed, your job is to find work, you understand? Is to find work. Guess what? Give me that in Sarah 7 verse 15, sir. 
Strike seven, verse 15. Read that first. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter seven, verse 15. Read. Hate not laborers' work, neither husbandry, which is the mo which the most high hath ordained. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter seven, verse 15. Hate not laborers work, neither husbandry, which the most high hath ordained. It says, don't hate laborers work. Don't hate to labor. So once you get those skills, your, your job is to what? To find work and labor. Because the most high has ordained laborers work. He's the one that ordained that thing. Now watch this. Now, you having skills, you cannot sit with them. You must now go and labor. Okay? Watch this. Now, give me that in 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3. Let's get there. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, that is verse 6. We're going to read down. 2 book of Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother, brother that walketh disorderly. Mm-hmm. Not after the tradition which he received of us. You see what he's saying? He says we must redraw ourselves from every brother that walketh his ordinary. He's going to tell you what that means. Go ahead. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. Mm -hmm. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. He says you must follow us because we set the right example for you. Because we don't walk disorderly among you. Go ahead. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught. You see what he's saying? We did not eat any man's, any man's bread for nothing. Meaning what? We are not expecting the congregation to take care of the leadership. We're not expecting that. That's why we have job. Go ahead. But wrought with labor and travail mm. night and day. You see that thing? But wrought with labor and travail, meaning a job, which the Mosai has ordained. Night and day, come on. That we might not be chargeable to any of you. You see that thing? That we might not be chargeable to any of you. Let you take care of us. No. Go ahead. Not because we have no power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. You see what it is? It's not because we don't have the power for you to tell you to take care of us because we teach you. But he says, but the reason why we do it is, is because we ourselves, we want to be example to you to follow us. Ray. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. You see that thing? If any would not work, neither should he eat. Because we had a brother with us. He left now. He was with us for a couple of something. And he, he did not want to work. You understand? He wanted to be a babysitter. He wanted to be a stay-at-home a stay, a stay dad while the wife goes to work. That's disorderly. You understand? That's walking disorderly. Brother, why didn't you come to camp? No, I was changing diapers. What the hell is this? Okay, go ahead. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. Mm -hmm. Working not at all, but are busybodies. You see that thing? They are working disorderly because they don't want to work. You understand? We're not talking about a brother that is actively looking for a job. No. The one that does, that's supposed to get a job, but he don't want to work. Okay, go ahead. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. You see that thing? It says, with quietness, they must work and eat their own bread. So now, you get skills. Once you get skills, you get a job so you can sustain yourself. That's so you can take care of yourself. That's why it says what? They eat their own bread. You understand? Because they work for it. They've got a job now. Okay, go ahead. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. He says, don't get tired of well-doing, meaning getting a job and working so you can sustain and maintain yourself. Right? 
And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, no dead man, mm -hmm. and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. He says we must point him out. We must put him on blast. That blast. You need to go get a job. You cannot be sitting here uh, as a you know eating free food and whatnot. You, and you don't want to go, you don't want to go get a job. No, no, no. We will not allow that in Islam, okay? Why? Because it's disorderly. Read. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. You see that? He says, don't count him as an enemy, but correct him as a brother. We must correct him that he may be ashamed. That's what the Lord is saying right there. The reason why I'm going over the provider part which goes into your, you know, being able to set smart goals and all that. Because, yes, it's one thing to teach on the seed, but your personal life is a mess. So, you see that? That means that wisdom you got, it did not bring down skill. For you to set smart goals so they can, smart goals so you, you can have a vision for yourself, your nation, and your house. You need to have those goals. Very important stuff. Okay? Now, watch this. Give me the book, because once you have a job, you're going to be able to what? To maintain and sustain yourself. Get that in Sarah 29 verse 21. Sarah 29 verse 21. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 29 verse 21. Go ahead. The chief thing for life is water and bread mm -hmm. and clothing and then house to cover shame. You see that? So once you have a job, you're going to be able to uh, be able to access and afford the cheap things for life, which is water, bread, with us food, and clothing, and then house to cover shame. This is to talk about you. Being able to maintain yourself. The skills will get you access to jobs. Once you have a job, you'll be able to uh, maintain, access, and afford these things. Go ahead. Better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage mm -hmm. than delicate fare in another man's house. Than delicate fare in another man's house. Okay? It is better for you to live in a jacked up house than living, great, living good in another, man, another man's house. That's not to be counted for life. Okay, come on. Be it little or much, hold thee contented. He says, you must be content. Read. That thou hear not the reproach of thy house. That you don't hear the reproach of your house because people are going to talk about you. Okay, go ahead. For it is a miserable life to go from house to house. You see that thing? It's a miserable thing. It's a miserable life to go from house to house. Why? Because you don't have a job. You're living in other people's houses. You understand? So basically, you are a bum. So now it says, if that's a miserable life to live like this. You say, go ahead. For where thou art a stranger, thou darest not to open thy mouth. Because you cannot open your mouth. You cannot have an opinion in somebody else's house about how he runs his house. You can't say nothing. Why? Because you don't pay bills. You understand? You're squatting. You're eating free food. So on and so forth. So you cannot say nothing. That's a miserable life. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay? Now watch this. Moving from house to house. Because if you don't have a job, you're not going to be able to have your own house. Okay? Track 36. Get that. Track 36, verse 26. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 36, verse 26. Go ahead. Who will trust a thief well appointed? That skippeth from city to city. Uh -huh. So who will believe a man that hath no house? You see that? So a, hold on. So a man that has no house is like a thief. Because where does he stay? In other people's houses. What is he stealing? He's stealing food because he's eating for free. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. So who will believe a man that has no house and mm. lodgeth wheresoever the night taketh him? You see that? It is who's going to believe a man that has no house 
and he sleepeth wherever the night takes him. He's a bum. You understand? So the Lord is saying, we must not be like that because that's walking disorderly. We're not talking about a brother that is on the streets now. They believe on this truth. They believe in, in on Christ. They want to keep the commandments of the Lord. They start keeping God's commandments. And guess what? They come into the body. They were not talking about that. We talk about you are in the truth. You don't want to get a job. You don't want to work. You live this type of life. You are a bum. That will not be acceptable. Okay? That's what the Lord is showing us right here. Now watch this. Because guess what? If you're doing this, you are not go you're not good to yourself. Therefore, you cannot be good to your nation. Get that in Sarah chapter 14. Okay? Sarah chapter 14, third verse. Start of verse, verse 5. Start of 14, verse 5. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 14, verse 5. Go ahead. He that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? You see that? If you are evil to yourself, you're not going to be good to your nation. You're not going to be good to your wife and your children because you are evil to yourself. You understand? Go ahead. He shall not take pleasure in his goods. You're not gonna take, he's not going to take pleasure in the things that he has because he's evil towards himself. You understand? He's stingy, he's greedy, he's always complaining, so on and so forth. Guess what? You're not going to be good to your nation. You're not going to be good to your house. Go ahead. There is none worse than he that envieth himself. Because you envy yourself, meaning you hate yourself. Because you hate yourself, he says, there's nothing worse than that. Go ahead. And this is a recompense of his wickedness. Because if you hate yourself, you're not going to love your neighbor as yourself. How are you going to do it? Because you hate yourself. So you are evil towards yourself. You're going to be evil towards your neighbor. Really? And if he doeth good, he doeth it unwillingly. They don't really want to do it. Yes, they are doing it, but they don't want to do it. Go ahead. And at the last, he will declare his wickedness. The Lord will declare his wickedness. Go ahead, verse 8. The envious man has a wicked eye. You see that thing? He's envious. So therefore he has got a wicked eye. Go ahead. He turneth away his face and despiseth men. Meaning he hates correction. He hates correction because he's evil towards himself. Automatically he's going to be evil towards his nation. And his wife, his children. Come on. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. He is not satisfied. He's covetous. Okay, come on. He's greedy, right? And the iniquity of the wicked dries up his soul. You see that thing? The iniquity of the wicked will dry his soul because why? The iniquity of the wicked is talk about the man that's ruling over us right now. Esau, Edom. So the iniquity of the wicked will dry up this man's soul. Why? Because he's moving in the spirit of what? Balaam. Doing things for money. Okay? So he's not good to his nation or to himself. So if he cannot be good to himself, he will not be good to his nation. He's not going to take care of his nation. So the mindset that you have to have as men is that you must think upon your nation. You must think upon taking care of your nation. Get that in Toby talks. Okay. Toby chapter 12, read verse 8. You know what? Don't get there. Give me, I'm going to show you something this day. Give me first Maccabees 3. Because guess what? Uh, as a provider, yes, you're providing for yourself, but you must also provide for your nation. I'm going to show you that. First Maccabees chapter 3. No, second Maccabees, I think that's what I want. 2 Maccabees 3, verse 10. Yep, I think that's the one. Yep, that's the one right there. Read that. 2 Book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 10. Go ahead. Then the high priest told him that there was such money laid up for the relief of widows and fatherless children. You see that? It says the high priest told him. So the high priest were in the right spirit. It says there was such money, so they had a treasure. It says there was such money laid up for the relief of widows and fatherless children. So let's deal with the widows, okay? Get that in First Timothy 5. 
First Timothy chapter five and verse. We're gonna start at verse. Let's see where I want to start. First Timothy chapter five. Start at verse three. First Timothy five and three. First book of Timothy chapter five is three. Come on. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Are honor widows that are widows indeed, meaning they are actual widows. Read on. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show pity at home mm -hmm. and to requite their parents. For that is good and acceptable before God. You see what he's saying? He says, but the widows that have children or nephews, let them, let the children and the nephews take care of them at home. You understand? He says what? And to require their parents, to help their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. That's what he's talking about. Now watch this. Um, read on. Now she that is a widow indeed, and desolate, trusteth in God, mm -hmm. and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. Is a she that is a widow indeed, meaning she's got nobody to take care of her. You understand? It says what? It says she's a widow indeed. She's desolate. She trusts, but she trusts in the Lord. She keeps the commandment. Okay? And continued in, up in supplication and prayers night and day. So she's doing good works. Okay? But she's a widow indeed. She's got nobody to take care of it. Now watch this. Jump down to verse... Read verse 9. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 9. Come on. They let a widow be taken into the number under three score years old, having been the wife of one man. It says the widow that must be taken must be looked after, must be taken care of. She must be what? She must be older. She must be older than what? It says three score years old. That goes, that's what? That's 60. So if she's 60 and up, that's a widow indeed. Okay? And guess what? We must, that, that's the one we take care of, okay? He says, having been the wife of one man. So she was married. The husband is, is died now. She's over 60, you understand? So she's into her age. So guess what? But, and she's keeping the commandment. She's got a good name, good report. He says, we must what? The congregation take care of them. That's what we're reading in First, Second Maccabees 3, verse 10. Understand that thing. That's what we read. Go ahead. He's going to tell you more characteristics of the widow. Well reported of for good works. Mm -hmm. If she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, go ahead. If she have washed the saints' feet, meaning take care of the saints, right? If she have relieved the afflicted, mm hmm. If she, if she have diligently followed every good work. You see that? So she must be taking care of the children, meaning what? The children in the congregation, the young ones, she's a mother to them. You understand? Is that she lost strangers, meaning um, the prophets traveling, doing the gospel, the evangelists, okay, the apostles. Is that she, if she was the same thing, she took care of them. If she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. This is the criteria for the widows that must be taken care of. Because there was a problem in the church. Watch this. Give me Acts chapter 4. No, Acts chapter 6. Read verse 1. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 6 verse 1. Read. Right? And in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Christians among, against the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. You see what was going on? So there was complaints from the, the Israelites that grew up under Greek custom. You understand? They were complaining against the Hebrews, the Jews in Jerusalem, because the widows were, neg they were ne they neglected the widows. You understand? It says the wi their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Because remember, there was a widow's fund that was set up. That's what we read in 2 Maccabees 3. You understand? There was a widow's fund because 
the Grecians, the Israelites grew up under Greek customs. They knew about this fund. But during the time of the Hebrews, that fund was no longer there. So the widows, were negle they were neglected. They were no longer being taken care of. You understand? So guess what? Yes, you take care of yourself. But guess what? You must take care of your nation as well. We need arms. You understand? We need arms for travel. We need arms for equipment. Okay? For clothes. To help a brother or sister in need in the congregation. So guess what? We need those arms. Okay? Now, we're not going to be able to preach this gospel, gospel without good looks. It's not going to happen. Don't be cheap. Now watch this. Give me... Um, hmm, what do I want? What do I want to get now? Popped into my head. Okay, watch this. Um, go to Toby. No, no, no. Stay in Acts. Acts chapter 4. Read verse 34. Acts 4 verse 34. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 4 verse 34. Go ahead. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Mm -hmm. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. Right. And laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. You see that thing? And distribution was given to every man according as he had need. So they distributed among the saints. You understand? According to as they had need. So they looked after each other. Now watch this. Now, remember, we dealt with the widow. Now we're going to deal with fatherless children. Give me that in Sarah 4 verse 10. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 10. You know what? Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Go back to 1 Timothy 5. There's something I wanted to touch on. Because we dealt with the widows must be 50 and up. 1 Timothy 5. 1 Timothy 5 verse 11. Watch this. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 11. Mm -hmm. But the younger wid widows refuse. Stop right there. The younger widows, we must refuse to help them. Why? Because they can get a job. They're still young. They can still get a job because they're supposed to have skills. Their husbands are gone. Their husband's supposed to leave an inheritance for them as well. You understand? But if not, they must get a job because they have a trade, they have a skill. That's why it says, but the younger widows refuse because they're still young enough to still get a job. Go ahead. For when they have begun to work, what went on against Christ? Because what? They're going to start, hold on, they're going to start to become thirsty. They're going to have companionship, sex, you understand? Under the covenant of marriage, of course. He says they're going to become, when they begin to work wanting against Christ, they start to burn. You understand? In their love. He says they will do what? They will marry. They're going to get married. So they can still get married. But the ones that are 60 and up, you know, you know, they are, I mean, they are in their age. Because they are especially now. You understand? Go ahead. Having damnation. Mm -hmm. Because they have cast off their first faith. Because they are now, they cast off their first faith, meaning not following Christ. Because now they are burning their last. They want to start to buy dildos and all that stuff. Yeah. He says refuse. They must get a job. You understand? If they have kids, they must continue to teach their kids that a good name, a good report, so they can get remarried. Because it's according to the law. I just wanted to touch on that. Okay. So, widows, fatherless children. Track 4 verse 10. Watch this. Of Ecclesiasticus chapter 4, verse 10. Go ahead. Be as a father unto the fatherless. You see what the Bible is saying? This is the job of the leaders in Israel. It says, Be as a father to the fatherless. Um, sons and daughters, they are in the truth, their parents are gone. You understand? It says, Be a father to the fatherless. That's the job of the leaders now. Go ahead. And instead of an husband unto their mother, you say that he says, instead of an husband unto their mother, meaning what? You focus on making sure that you are a father to them. You understand? Nothing else. Go ahead. 
so shalt thou be as the son of the most high. He says, you are good, so shalt thou be as the son of the most high. Come on. And he shall love thee more than thy mother doth. Uh, God says, you are a father to the fatherless. The Lord, the most high God will love you more than your own parents do. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Watch this. Get that in Deuteronomy chapter 14. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and read verse 29. Because this is when we, every three years, we will go to Jerusalem to give 10% of the stuff that we have. For the Levites, not only for the Levites, but it's going to tell you for who also. Read verse 29. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 29. Go ahead. The Levite, because he has no part, no inheritance with thee, and a stranger, and the father, mm -hmm. and, and the, the what? And the stranger and the fatherless. And the fatherless. So the stranger, the fatherless. Okay. And the what? And the widow. And the widow. 60, 60 and up. Go ahead. Which are within thy gates shall mm -hmm. come and shall eat and be satisfied. That the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand which thou doest. You see that thing? So that's what we're reading here. The most High God is telling us, listen, you must take care of the fatherless children. Watch this. Get that in Exodus chapter 22. Exodus 22. Because, hmm, that's a topic for another day. I'm going to touch on that. Exodus 22, read verse, um, Exodus 22 and verse, yeah, verse 22. Exodus 22, 22. Of Exodus chapter 22, verse 22. Go ahead. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless mm -hmm. child. You see what the Bible is saying? Don't afflict a widow or fatherless child. That's the law. Read. If thou afflict them in any wise and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. The Lord says he's going to hear their cry. Come on. And my wrath shall wax hot. Mm -hmm. And I will kill you with the sword. Mm, that's some heavy stuff. Go ahead. And your wives shall be widows. And your children fatherless. Just like them. That's what the Bible is saying. The most high is a just God. You understand? So now, watch this. Mm. Go back. Go back to um, go back to go back to Acts. Go back to Acts chapter six verse one. Read that again. Of Acts chapter six verse one. Read. And in those days, when the number of the disciples were, multi were multiplied, there rose a murmuring of the Christians against the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. You see that? So we must not neglect the widow or the fatherless children. Because our forefathers, they had a fund, a widow's fund, and fatherless children so they can be taken care of. That's what the Lord did. You understand? So, so guess what? We must also move in the same spirit. So when you come into the truth, that's the mindset you have to have. Because if you don't want to take care of your nation, guess what? You're going to struggle. You don't want to take care of your nation. Your, your family will struggle. You understand? So we must understand that thing. As you come into this truth, you're learning. You understand that you must be a provider. Those are things that you need to know. You need to understand those things. Okay? So now, you must take care of your nation. You must take, you must take care of yourself. You must sustain yourself with a job. You must be able to take care of your nation. Because why? They're going to need those basic things in life. Okay, so when you are able to do that, you'll be able to take care of your family, your wife and your children. Okay, watch this. Um, let's go to Genesis page with page. What our forefather Jacob did. Okay, we read it earlier, but let's read it again now. The book of Genesis chapter 30 verse 30. Go ahead. For it was little which thou hadst before I came. Mm -hmm. And it is now increased unto a multitude. 
and the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And Ray? now, when shall I provide for mine own house also? You see that? He wanted to provide for his own house, for his two wives and the children, our us. You understand? So guess what? Jacob was a responsible man. You understand? He was responsible and he understood his role. He understood that he must be a provider. And that's exactly what he did. He provided for his own house. Understand that thing. Give me the book of Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 24. Uh, read, verse, read verse 34. Book of Genesis chapter 24 verse 34. Mm -hmm. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. Go ahead. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly. Mm -hmm. And he is become great. And he hath given him flocks and, and herds and silver and gold. And manservants and maidservants and camels and asses. So now the Abraham servant is explaining that his master is wealthy. You understand? Our forefather Abraham was, was wealthy. Okay? Watch this. Jump down to the... Yeah, keep going. Read verse 36. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old. And unto him hath he given all that he hath. You see that thing? So he provided for his house. So guess what? He gave inheritance to his son, Isaac. Okay? Our forefather. Because he was what? He was wealthy. He took care. Abraham took care of his house. He was a provider. You understand? He was a provider because he loved the Lord. He kept God's commandment. Okay? Get that in Genesis 26. Genesis 26 verse 5. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 26 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice mm. and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. You see that? So he had wisdom. So he was a preacher. He understood that thing. So guess what? Not only that, he was a provider. He provided for himself, for his nation, and guess what? He provided for his household also. Because guess what? He says here, he says he had men servant and maid servant. So he took care of everybody that was in the house. That's what our forefather Abraham did. So guess what? He was a provider. So we must understand that we must follow after the footsteps of our forefathers. Now, watch this. Now, the next thing is, hmm, hold on a second. Before we proceed, because you must provide for your wife. You must provide for your wife. Our forefather Abraham provided for Sarah. You understand? Let's get that. Genesis chapter 18. Yep. Genesis chapter 18. Start at verse. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 4. This way, Abraham, our forefather, he was hosting the angel. Okay, watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 4. Go ahead. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet. And rest yourselves under the tree. Because Abraham had land. Okay, go ahead. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and mm. comfort ye your hearts. After that, ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. Go ahead. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, make ready quickly the, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal mm. knead it and make cakes upon the earth. So you see what he's doing? He said, listen, make ready three, he says, make quick three measures of fine meal knead it, make cakes upon the earth. So guess what? The same way he was able to even host the angels Guess what? He was able to take care of his wife and his son, Isaac. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. He took care of his house. Abraham, was a, Abraham, our forefather, he was a provider. You understand? He was a provider. So now, 
for you to be able to provide, obviously you must have a job, you must have a place to stay, you understand? You must have a house to cover shame where you and your wife or your future wife are going to what? We are going to launch. I said future wife. Why am I bringing this up? I am bringing this up because you brothers that are in the truth, yes, you've got a job, you've got a place to stay, okay? But here's the problem. The thing that you're not doing right now is saving money for Lobor. Not all of you are doing that. You are not saving up money for Lobor. You understand? So if you're not doing it, you better start now. You better save money aside for Lobor. Understand that. You men understand that? Yes, sir. So if you have not started, you better start this month. Start to put money aside, be specific, and for you to get the specificity of how much it costs, you must, you know, start to do some research. Look at the going rate. Hmm? Look at the going rate of Lovola today. It's nothing short of 50 grand. So keep that in mind. So 50,000 and up, that's the going rate now in Mzanzi for sure. So if the men in the world can be able to do that, you in the truth knowing all you know, you cannot do that. Listen, you're a cheap nigger. Okay? So you better set some smart goals for you to achieve those goals. Understand that. Okay? So you must put money aside. You must save up for the board. Okay? Now watch this. Um, give me... Give me the book of Tobit. Give me Tobit chapter 7. Okay? Give me Tobit chapter 7. Read verse 12. The book of Tobit, chapter 7, verse 12. Go ahead. Reguel said, Then take her from oh. his father. Start at verse 10. Start at verse 10. We're going to read down. Start at verse 10. Watch this. The book of Tobit, chapter 7, verse 10. Mm -hmm. For it is meet that thou shouldest marry my daughter. Go ahead. Nevertheless, I will declare unto thee the truth. It says, it is good that thou shouldest marry my daughter, meaning Sarah. Go ahead. I have given my daughter in marriage to seven men mm. who died that night they came in unto her. Meaning in the marriage chamber, because but they never dealt with the sister. What verse is there? Um, yep. Yeah, get that. Uh, Toby 3. Get Toby chapter 3. Uh, read verse 8. The book of Toby chapter 3, verse 8. Because that she had been married to seven husbands, mm. whom Asmodeus, the evil spirit, had killed, mm. before they had lain with her. You see that thing? So Asmodeus, the evil angel, had killed. You know, there was a sister on YouTube who called, who named his son Asmodeus. You cannot make this up. Asmodeus. Listen, don't, listen, do not name your children Asmodeus. Read verse 8 again. The book of Tobit, chapter 3, verse 8. Go ahead. Because that she had been married to seven husbands, whom Asmodeus, the evil spirit, had killed, mm -hmm. before they had lain with her. Before they had sex with her, before they could sleep with the sister, what happened? He killed them. Asmodeus killed them, those seven men. Go ahead. Dost thou not know, said they, that thou hast strangled thine husbands? Thou hast had already seven husbands. Neither was thou named after any of them. Because when you marry a sister, she takes on your name, not the other way around. So go back to Toby 7, read verse 11 again. The book of Toby, chapter 7, verse 11. I have given my daughter in marriage to seven men who died that night they came in unto her. Nevertheless, for the present, be merry. But Tobias said, I will eat nothing here till we agree and swear one to another. Regarding marriage. Okay, Tobias. Go ahead. 
Reguel said, Then take her from henceforth according to the manner. So Tobias, this is Toby Jr. now. Toby Jr. is getting married, okay? So now the father-in-law says, listen, take care the henceforth according to the men, according to how we do things in Israel when it comes to marriage. Go ahead. For thou art her cousin, mm -hmm. and she is thine. And she is yours. She's your possession to take care of. That's the mindset you have to have. So if you are going to be doing this, you are going to be getting married in the future, you better prepare for it now. You better set some smart goals regarding that love all. You must already have your own house. You must have a job, a place to stay. You must know, learn, already know how to sustain and take care of yourself month to month. You must save up. Always keep your wife to be in mind. Why? Because you're preparing for this. You're setting smart, realistic goals. Go ahead. And the merciful God give you good success in all things. The Lord will give you good success in all things if you think like that. That's what, that's what the father-in-law is telling Tobias. Go ahead. Then he called his daughter Sarah. Now this is the father now, Reguel. He's calling his daughter Sarah. Come on. And she came to her father. And mm -hmm. he took her by the hand. Really? And gave her to be wife to Tobias. You see that thing? He gave her to be wife to Tobias because... The responsibility, ascension into manhood, roles and responsibility. The responsibility that the father had over his daughter now is being handed over to Tobias to continue on on that role and responsibility. Go ahead. Say, behold, take her after the law of Moses mm -hmm. and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed them. He blessed them. Go ahead. Watch this. Read. And called Edna his wife and took paper and did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it. You see that thing? So now after, now the wedding, the, 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 the father hands his daughter over. You understand? And guess what they do? They sign the papers, the marriage certificate. Okay. After they do that, go ahead. Then they began to eat. Then they began to eat. How else are you going to eat if when you are a chick negro? You understand? You did not save up for Lobola. Now you want brothers, you say brothers, I need arms. Arms for Lobola. You crazy. Me, I don't want to go to a wedding where I'm going to be eating Maguinale's part. That's not happening. You understand? You better save up for Lobola. The hell is this? Go ahead. After Raguel called his wife Edna and said unto her, Sister, prepare another chamber and bring her mm -hmm. in thither. You see, the marriage chamber, where they are going to consummate the marriage. Okay, come on. Which, when she had done as he had bidden her, she brought her thither, and she wept, and she received the tears of her daughter, and said unto her, Ray, right? Be of good comfort, my daughter. The Lord of heaven and earth Give thee joy for this thy sorrow. Be of good comfort, my daughter. So now what we're reading here is what? I need you to read a little bit quicker. What we're reading here is, when the daughter, the reason why the daughter was crying was because seven husbands were put to death by Asmodia. So he's just crying now thinking, oh, uh, here's another one. You understand? But it was not so. Chapter 8, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Tob, chapter 8, verse 1. And when they had supped, they brought Tobias in unto her. You see that thing? After they've eaten, now this is during the wedding tea. While they were eating, they went into the wedding chamber to consummate the marriage. After the father handed her over and they signed the marriage certificate, and guess what? They started to eat. They went into the marriage chamber. Those are the steps. And you understand? Hmm. Jump down to verse 4. Watch this. Verse 4. And after that, they were both shut in together. Mm -hmm. Tobias rose out of the bed and said, Sister, arise, and let us pray that God would have pity on us. You see that thing? He rose out of the bed. The bed sits in the house. It does not sit on the seat. It requires a house to cover shame. Go ahead. Then began Tobias to say, 
Blessed art thou, O God of our fathers, and blessed is thy holy and glorious name forever. Let the heavens bless thee and all thy creatures. Let the heavens bless thee and all thy creatures. I need you to read a little quick. Come on. Verse 6. Thou made us Adam and gave us Eve his wife for an helper instead of mm. them and mankind. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. You see that? It says what? Is that this woman is, is an helper and stay. You understand? So it says what? It is not good that men should be alone. Let us make him an aid like unto himself. Because why? An aid like unto himself. Not, not equal. Not on the same level. No, an aid like unto yourself. She is dying. That's what it says in Tobit. That we read in Tobit 7. She is dying. She's your possession to take care of. Go ahead. And now, Lord... I take not this my sister for last, but upright. Right. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. So guess what? Don't take this sister for last. Because if you marry for last, it's not going to last. It's going to be over before you know it. So you must take her upright. You must understand that both of you must first connect to the Lord. Then you know how to connect to each other. But if both of you or one of you disconnected from the Lord, you are not going to connect together. Guess what? You are not going to become aged together. Understand that. You must understand the purpose of marriage is to what? Is to connect, first connect to the Lord, connect to each other. You come together according to how God set it up. You understand? And therefore, your union is going to be honored by the Most High God under the covenant of marriage, like we just read. Okay? Now watch this. Toby chapter 10, read verse 11. Read verse 12. Book of Tobit, chapter 10, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And he said to his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, which are now thy parents. You see that, that I may now? Have good... Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. It says what? It says, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law. Now, this is the father. The father is giving instruction to his daughter. Okay, come on. Which are now right. thy parents. That which I may are now your parents. Daughter. Read. That I may hear good report of thee. Mm -hmm. And he kissed her. Edna also said to Tobias, The Lord of heaven restore thee, my dear brother, and grant that I may see the children of my daughter Sarah before I die. So meaning I want to see my grandchildren. Go ahead. That I may rejoice before the Lord. Behold, I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. You Wherefore, see that thing right there? That thing right there? That thing right there? It says, I commit my daughter unto you of special trust. Now, right here, this is a warning. You understand? Don't, don't, don't ill treat my daughter. Understand that? Okay, go ahead. Wherefore, do not entreat her evil. That's a warning shot right there. It says, listen, I'm committing my daughter unto you of special trust because she was entrusted under us. Now we are entrusting her unto you. Don't mistreat her because if you do, you are going to see your maker. You understand? You're going to see some flame. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 31 because the same covenant, um, Genesis chapter 31 and verse... Yeah, Genesis chapter 31, read verse 40, um, verse 43. The book of Genesis chapter 31, verse 43. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters. You see that? These daughters are what? These daughters are my daughters. It says, these are my daughters, Jacob. These are my daughters. Go ahead. And these children are my children. Mm -hmm. And these cattle are my cattle. Go ahead. And all, that thou, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto their children, which they will have born? Okay. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. Now therefore, come thou. Let us make a covenant 
I and thou. Let mm. it be for a witness between me and thee. Okay, jump down to verse 50. Watch this. It says, we're making a covenant. Laban now is talking to Jacob. Say, listen, I'm making a covenant. Let's make a covenant, you and I, regarding my daughters. Read verse 50. Watch this. Verse 50. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. You see what he's telling him? He said, listen, don't afflict my daughter, okay? And don't take other wives outside of my daughter. That's what he's telling him. You understand? He says, if you do so, no man is with us. See, God is witness between me and thee. The Lord, is, the Lord is watching this. That's the same thing we read in Toby. Um, what is he saying? He said, listen, I'm, I'm entrusting my daughters unto you on special trust. Do not entreat them evil. That's the mindset you have to have. When you saving that money up for Lobola and all that, and you're going to take a wife, guess what? You taking over the role and responsibility that the father used to do, now it's your job. You understand? You must be able to nourish her and take care of her. Get that in Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Let's read verse... Not verse 1. Yep, Ephesians 5. And verse, verse 25. Let's read that. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, is 25. Go ahead. Husbands, love your wives. Mm. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. He says, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. We're going to deal with that later on. Keep going. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of water by the word. So because, guess what? The it is the church that Christ sanctified. Likewise, your wife and your children, that's the church in your house. Your job is to sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You teach your wife God's law and your children. Go ahead. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Mm. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. Without sin. That's the, that's the job of the husband in the house. Okay, go ahead. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Mm. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. You see that thing? You must love your wife as your own body because you are applying the royal law. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you are evil towards yourself, you're going to be evil towards your nation and your wife. Go ahead. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it, and cherish it, even as the Lord the church. Go ahead. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Do you see that thing? We are members of his what? We are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Your wife is a part of you. So guess what? You must nourish her. You must nurture it. You must take care of it. That's your job. That is the job of a husband as a provider. You understand? Go ahead. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. Mm -hmm. And they too shall be one flesh. Amen to that thing. All praise to the Lord. Go ahead. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Ray, that's, that's what marriage is. Marriage is a great mystery which represents Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel which can never be separated. It must always be one. Just like a wife and a husband must be one flesh, Christ and the church, we are one with Christ. Ray? Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. Mm -hmm. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. That she shows deep respect to her husband. Okay, now, watch this. Now, the next thing is, as a man, ascension into manhood, the third pillar is, you are a protector. You are a preacher. You are a provider. And you are, a, you are the protector. Watch this. Give me the book of Nehemiah 2 verse 10. Nehemiah 2 verse 10. Because as job, the job, job as leaders, our job is to protect. 
You protect your nation, you protect your wife and your children. Okay? Nehemiah 2 verse 10. The book of Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 10. Go ahead. When Sambalat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. You see that thing? So that's what a protector does. They seek for the welfare of the children of Israel, the welfare of his people. You can only do that if you love your nation. If you don't love your nation, you are not going to be able to do that thing. So you must have love for your people. You must have love for your nation, your fellow men, your fellow brethren. You understand? Watch this. Get that in Numbers 32, verse 5 and 6. Because, because you love your nation, you're going to protect them. You're going to go to war for them. You understand? Read that. Numbers 32, verse 5 and 6. The book of Numbers, chapter 32, verse 5. Go ahead. Wherefore, said they, if we have found mm -hmm. grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for a possession, and bring us not over Jordan. You see that? Ger and Reuben, they were just, listen, they had everything good was covered for them. They said, well, with the rest of their brethren. Then Moses said, mm -mm, that's not the right mindset. You are being an individual life. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the children of Gad, and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war? And shall you sit here? You see that thing? When your brothers are going to war, you cannot sit behind. No, no. You must go to war with your brethren. Because guess what? You must be the protector of your nation. Our nation, the nation of Israel, needs leaders. You understand? So guess what? You cannot be an individual like sit on the sideline, popping gum, wearing tight pants and blonde in your hair, carrying a woman's handbag. That will not take place. You understand? Shall your brothers go to war and you sit here behind here? No. Go ahead. And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given them. You see that thing? You're going to discourage the hearts and minds of the children of Israel. The rest of your brethren, they are going to be discouraged. Get Joshua 18, verse 3. That is verse 2. Joshua 18 and verse 2. Watch this. The book of Joshua, chapter 18, verse 2. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. So seven tribes at this time had not yet received their inheritance. Watch this. Go ahead. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, hmm. How long are you slack to go to possess the land? which the Lord God of your fathers has given you. He says, how long are you going to be slack to sit down and do nothing while your nation is catching hell? That's why as, a, as the job of the leaders, ascension into manhood, you must understand, you must be a protector of your nation. That's what Joshua was getting on them. The same thing Moses did, Moses got on them, Joshua did the same thing. He got on them. Get that in Haggai. Okay? Haggai chapter 1. Read verse 14. Watch this. The book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 14. Read. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Sheiltiel, she she governor yeah. of Judah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Read. And the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. You see that thing? Because the spirit of the Lord was upon Zerubbabel. It says, the Lord set up the spirit of Zerubbabel and shall heal the governor of Judah to get the work done. You understand? Watch this. Get that in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19 now. The book of Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19. Behold, at that no, no, time, no. verse 16, I'm sorry, verse 16, read verse 16 for me. That's what I want. Let me write that down. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. It says, Let not your hands be slack to do the work of the Most High God. Why? Because we must protect. 
We are protectors of our nation. We are the leaders of our nation. Guess what? We must protect our nation as well, spiritually, mentally, and physically. That's the job. Okay? Give me that in Psalms 94, verse 16. Psalms 94, verse 16. Because King David spoke about this thing. Okay? Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Read. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? You see that thing? Who, who's going to stand up for the most High God against the evildoers and the workers of iniquity? Who's going to do that? The prophet. You understand? That's our job, to stand up, to rise up for the Lord, and do the work of the most High to protect our nation. Give me that in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 6. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 6. Second book of Samuel, chapter 22, verse 30. Go ahead. For by thee I will run through a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. You see that thing? Because this is when the, the most High God put the spirit of our forefather, King David, to go to war, to defend the nation, and to put our enemies to flight. You understand? The Lord was with him. Go ahead. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is, a, he is a buckler to all them that trust in him. Mm -hmm. Come on. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? Rain. God is my strength and power. Mm -hmm. And he maketh my way perfect. You see what the Lord does? The Lord is our strength and our power. He makes our way perfect. Come on. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. Rain. He teacheth my hands to war mm. so that a bow of steel is broken by my by, by mine arms. That's some heavy stuff right there. He says he teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Because the Lord is the one that teaches us how to fight. You understand? He taught King David how to fight physically. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 144 verse 1. Are we coming back here? Psalms 144 verse 1. Because King David explained this thing. Psalms 144 verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 144 verse 1. Read. Blessed be the Lord my strength, who teaches mm -hmm. my hands to war. Mm. And my fingers to fight. You see that thing? He teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Why? To defend our nation. To protect our nation from the enemies that are around about us. In the lands of our captivity among the four corners of the earth. Go back to Second Samuel 22. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 36. Okay, come on. Samuel chapter 22 verse 36. Read. Thou hast also given me the shield of my salvation. Mm -hmm. And thy gentleness hath made me great. You see that thing? The gentleness of the Lord made us great. His mercy. Go ahead. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet do not slip. Meaning what? The Lord gives us the spirit to repent. That's what he's teaching us right there. Watch this. Go ahead. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed mm -hmm. them. Really? And said not again until I had consumed them. You see that thing? Because David was protecting the nation of Israel. That's the same thing we're doing today, but in the spiritual sense. Okay, come on. And I have consumed them and wounded them, that they could not arise. Yea, they have fallen under my feet. Go ahead. For thou hast guided me with strength to battle. Them that arose up against me hast thou subdued under me. Mm -hmm. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. Right? They looked, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Right? Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. Mm. I did stamp them as the mire of the street, and did spread right. them. And did what? 
and to spread them ab abroad and put them to flight. So that's what King David was doing. The Lord was using King David to bring forth vengeance upon our enemies. Today we doing the same thing in the spirit of Christ. We're not physical, it's all spiritual. Understand that thing. Give me that in first Maccabees 2, verse 1. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, the son of Simeon, a priest of the sons of Joarib from Jerusalem and dwelt in Modin. So now Mattathias rose up because Israel was catching hell. Jump down to verse 6. Watch this. Verse 6. And when he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Judah and Jerusalem. By the Greeks. Okay, come on. He said, woe is me. Wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people and of the holy city and to dwell there when it was delivered into the hand of the enemy and the sanctuary into the hand of strangers. Mm -hmm. Her temple is become as a man without glory. You see that because Jerusalem was desolate. They were sacrificing swine's flesh, defiling our temples. He rose up and said, listen, to hell with this. We need to stand up to defend our nation. Jump down to verse 14. Come on. Verse 14. Then Mattathias and his sons rent their clothes and put on sackcloth and mourned very sore. They fasted. Come on. In the meanwhile, the king's officers, such as compelled the people to revolt, came mm. into the city of Odin to make them sacrifice. To make them sacrifice. Watch this. Come on. And when many of Israel came unto them, Mattathias also and his sons came together. Read. Right. Then answered the king's officers and said to Mattathias on this wise, Thou art a ruler and an honorable and great man in the city, and strengthened, his with, and strengthened with sons and brethren. He says, You are strengthened with sons and brethren. He's flattering him. He's flattering Mattathias. Let's see what our forefathers did. Go ahead. Now therefore come thou first and fulfill the king's commandment. Like as all the heathen have done, yea, and the men of Judah also, and such as remain in Jerusalem. So shalt thou and thy house be in the number of the king's friends. And thou and thy children shall be honored with silver and gold and many rewards. So you see that thing? This is bribery now. So he's bribing him not to fight for his nation, not to defend the desolate, the nation of Israel that was desolate during that time by the Greeks. Okay, come on. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice, though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him and fall away everyone from the religion of their fathers and give consent to his commandments. Meaning they follow the king's commandments and they renounce their religion of their fathers. Watch this. Go ahead. Yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. Mm -hmm. God forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances. You see that thing says, we're not going to do that. We are going to keep God's commandments and honor the commandments of our forefathers that as they did. Go ahead. We will not hearken to the king's words to go from our religion either on the right hand or the left. You see that? The same thing that Joshua was told, he also followed the same thing. Watch this. Give me, um, give me 49 to 50. Same chapter. Verse 49. Now when the time drew near that Mattathias should die, he said unto his sons, Now hath pride and rebuke gotten strength, and the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law, and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. You see that thing? He says, I'm about to die. Make sure this is the mission. Stay on the mission. You must, be def you must defend your nation. You understand? He says, give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Come on. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So mm. shall you receive great honor and an everlasting name. Jump down to verse 64. 
Verse 64. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the Lord. For by it... Thing? It says, show yourselves men in the behalf of the law, meaning defend the covenant of your fathers. You must stand up for this Bible. That's why King David asked, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? That's what they did. Marathias did that thing. He rose up and he stands also with him. Go ahead. For by it shall you obtain glory. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And behold, I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. Give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. Go ahead. As for Judas Maccabees, he hath been mighty and strong, even from his youth up. Let him be your captain and fight the battle of the people. And do what? And fight the battle of the people. So Judas Maccabee was fighting physically. Simon was fighting spiritually because he was a man of counsel and he was a father unto them. Yet wisdom, Judah was Judah Maccabee was the master, if you will. Go ahead, verse 67 now. Come on. Take also unto you all those that observe the law mm -hmm. and avenge ye the wrong of your people. And do what? And avenge ye the wrong of your people. It says, avenge the wrong of your people. It means defend your nation. Bring forth vengeance upon them. How do we do it now? You understand? In captivity, we teach our people God's laws to repent and to come out of the customs and traditions of the heathens that are around about us that have enslaved us. Now watch this. Give me that in um, First Maccabees 3 verse 1. First book of Maccabees chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then his son Judas, called Maccabees, rose up in his stead. This is after Marathias had died. Marathias had died at this point. Now Judah Maccabee is, raising, is rising up now. Go ahead. And all his brethren helped him. And so did all they that held with his father. And mm -hmm. they fought with cheerfulness the battle of Israel. That's what we're doing today, brothers. We are fighting with cheerfulness the battle of Israel. Come on. So he gave his people great honor and put on a breastplate as a giant and girded his warlike harness about him and he made battles protecting the host with his sword. Read. Right? In his acts, he was like a lion mm. and like a lion's whelp roaring for his prey. You see that thing right there? He was in the full spirit. Christ says, listen, I'm going to put the spirit of a lion upon you. Go ahead. For he pursued the wicked and sought them out and burnt up those that vexed his people. You see that thing? He was bringing, he was a protector of his nation, just like his father did. Read. Wherefore the wicked shrunk for fear of him, and all the hmm. workers of iniquity, and all the workers of iniquity were troubled, because salvation prospered in his hand. Because the Lord prospers the work of his hand. That's why he was able to put the enemy to flight. So, but the war that we fight in today is a spiritual one. Understand that thing. Give me that in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. The war that we fight in today is a spiritual one. It's not a physical war. It's a spiritual one. Okay? Read that. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 4. 2 book of Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. Go ahead. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the to the pulling down of strongholds. So the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. The weapon of our war that we are in is what? They are spiritual. We're using a spiritual weapon to what? To cast down every ounce of ima wicked imagination that is in the minds of our people. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Let's get that real quick. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Go ahead. For the word of for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's the weapon we use. The weapon that we use is the word of God. We don't use guns. We don't use knives. We don't bend nobody. We use the word of God. That's the greatest weapon on this earth that is in our hands, that the Lord woke us up to remember it. 
Now give me that in Ephesians 6 verse 13. Book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. Go ahead. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that he may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done mm -hmm. all to stand. You see that thing? We must take on the whole armor of God. The whole armor is this Bible. We must put on the whole armor. We must learn the whole Bible because the Bible is our weapon to change the mind, the minds and hearts of our people because our people are walking in the wrong direction. Go ahead. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, mm -hmm. and having on the breastplate of righteousness. You see that thing? Have the breastplate of righteousness. Remember, Judah Maccabee had the breastplate as a giant. He had a sword. He went to war. Physical. Today, our warfare is not carnal, it's spiritual. He says we must have our loins get about with truth. First Peter 1 verse 13. Let's understand. Our loins must be get about with truth. What that mean? What that means? First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. First book of Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Go ahead. Wherefore get up the loins of your mind. Be mm -hmm. so and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You see that? It says, wherefore, get up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Meaning, be sober-minded. Go back to Ephesians 6 verse 14 again. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 14. Come on. Then, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, Mm. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Your loins is the loins of your mind. Be sober. Be village vigilant. Meaning stay in the spirit. Because the warfare that we are in now is no longer physical. It's spiritual. And the Bible is a weapon of war. Read. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Because our people need this gospel of peace. Our job is to go out there to teach our people the gospel of peace. Read. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So the shield of faith, guess what? Our faith is in the Messiah. We're going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and his testimony, and we love not our lives unto the death. That's what we read in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, earlier on, in the beginning of the class. Go ahead. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword mm. of the Spirit, which That's some heavy stuff. Take, hold on. It says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the helmet of salvation is the word of the most High God. What is the apostle Paul doing? He's putting us in the mind state of a warrior. A, you understand? A soldier. That's what he's doing. A soldier of Christ. We must arm ourselves, brothers. We must arm ourselves with the word of God to protect and what? and fight for our nation because our nation is catching hell. That's the job. You understand? The, the final pillar is, guess what? You must be what? You must be a sacrifice for your nation. You, when you fight for your nation, you will become a sacrifice for your nation. Understand that? Get that in Ephesians 5 verse 25. We read it earlier. Ephesians 5 verse 25. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25. Husbands, mm -hmm. love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself mm. for it. That part right there. Husband, love your wife. Because we love our wives and we give our, we love our wives even as Christ loved the church. And Christ gave himself for the church. He died for us. So the same way Christ died for the 12 tribes of Israel, guess what? Our job is to protect our nation and our wives, our children. Guess what? We might get killed doing so. That's the sacrifice. We must all understand that. It must all be in our mind. Give me that in Ephesians chapter 5 and 1. Jump up to verse 1. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. Be therefore followers of God as their children. Read. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. You see that thing? That's how we love. The, that's how we love our people. We love your, your people. Your, your love, the love for your nation. The love for your family and your children. Guess what? 
you have to give yourself up as an offering and a sacrifice to God as a, for a sweet smelling savor. Just like Christ did it, we guess what? We are in line for that because we're following after his footsteps. Watch this. Give me that in John 11, verse 49. John chapter 11, verse 49. Read what you got. John chapter 11, verse 49. Read. And one of them named Cephas, named Cephas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. Read. No consider that it is expedient to, for us that one man should die for the people and that the mm. whole nation perish not. You see that thing? That one man should die for the people and that the whole nation, meaning all 12 tribes, perish not. Go ahead. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. That Jesus should die for that nation. Come on. And not for that nation only. But that also he should gather to that. But that also he should gather together in one. The children of God that were scattered abroad. Northern kingdom. He's not going to die for Judah only. But he's also going to die for the northern kingdom that were scattered abroad. Not for that nation only. But for the whole nation. That the whole nation perish not. So that's what Christ did. He gave himself for the church. Likewise, the same thing with us. John 15 verse 12. Watch this. When he did that, that's what it meant. Read that for me. John 15 verse 12. Come on. The book of John chapter 15 verse 12. This Read. is my commandment, that he love one another as I have loved Read. you. Mm -hmm. Greater love is no man is. That a man love man, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Okay, John 15, verse 12. Come on, I'm almost done, brother. I'm almost done. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 12. This mm -hmm. is my command that he love one another as I have loved you. You see that? It says, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So the same way Christ loved us, he says, we must love each other the same way. How? Next verse. Go ahead. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. You see that thing? It says, greater love has no man than this. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. This is, this is, there's no greater love than that. You understand? So today, likewise, we go out there, we put our lives on the line for the benefit of our nation. That's, that's the greatest love ever. Because we're following after the footsteps of the, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Now watch this. Get that in um, Romans chapter 5 and 6. Romans chapter 5 and 6. The book of Romans chapter 5 and 6. For when we were yet without, without strength, in due time, Christ died for them. Good. You see that thing? It says when we were without strength. Because when were we without strength? Ever since we, we ended, ever since we were in captivity until this day, we have been without strength. Get that in Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. It says, when we were without strength. Okay. Watch this. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. Right. And from David until they're getting away into David, into Babylon, are 14 generations. And from they're getting away into Babylon and to Christ are 14 generations. Because from that time, from the time of Abraham and David, from the time of, uh, from King David to the getting away into Babylon, that includes where? From the Assyrian Empire, we had Babylon, you understand? And from there... We went unto, under the Persians and me, the Greeks and the Romans, even to, to, unto Christ. We were in captivity. And to this day, we're still in captivity. You understand? But that's what, because, because of captivity, slavery, apartheid, forced migration, colonization, we are without sin. But through Christ, we're going to come out of the downhill that we're in. The Lord will raise us up in these last days. Get that in First Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. Watch this. 
first book of Samuel, chapter 2, verse 8. He right. rises up the poor of the dark and lifted he raised, up. Hold on. He says, he raises up the poor out of the dust. We the poor. The Lord is raising us up out of the dust because we are now we are like the dust of the earth now. Go ahead. And lifted up the beggar from the dung heap. The beggar with us. Like we read in Luke 16, Lazarus, yeah, with the beggar. It says from the Daniel. The Daniel, excuse my French, it means a pile of shit. So the Lord says he's raising us up from the pile of poop. Okay, because that's where we are, spiritually, mentally, and physically. Go ahead. To set them up among princes and to make mm -hmm. them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of Come the on. earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. Because after all this, yes, we did. the way we look, it doesn't look like that. But through Christ who sent us, who died for us, guess what? The Lord says, I'm going to raise you up, you Israelites. I'm going to raise you up, and the world will be set upon you. That's the promise that the Lord made. It will truly come to pass. Matthew 1 verse 21. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Because that's what Christ did. Because without him, we would still be dead this day. We are all supposed to be put to death. You understand? But because of him dying, he gave us a chance to get our minds right. So we can get the kingdom. Okay? Go back to uh, Romans chapter 5. Read the 7 now. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 7. For scarcely for a righteous man one, will one die. Yet, for adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. You see that thing? It says, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, for adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. Because Christ is the righteous man that died for us. Go ahead. But God commended his love toward us. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us because by right, we all supposed to be dead. Understand that. Go ahead. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from breath through him. You see that thing? Because now we justified by his blood. Him dying on the cross for the 12 tribes, he saved, he, he says what shall we shall be saved from wrath you shall, we shall be saved from rest through him, the rest of the most High God upon us. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of the Son, much more, yeah. being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. You see that thing? So Christ, he's the one, we, we will not be here if it wasn't for him. The most High God was going to wipe the whole earth. Go ahead. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. We received that sacrifice that he made for us because he, he loved his people that much. He, and he was, guess what? He did his mission. He, he got it done for the love of his nation. John 13 verse 15. The book of John chapter 13 verse 15. For I have given you an example that he should mm -hmm. do as I have done to you. You see what he's saying? He says, I've gave you an example that you should do as I have done unto you. Watch this. Matthew 10, verse 38. Matthew chapter 10. You know what? First Peter 2, 21. We're going to read that. First Peter 2, verse 21. This is an example that he gave to us. There's, a, there's, more, in, there's more to that verse. Keep reading. First Peter 2, verse 21. We're going to read that. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 1. For even right. here unto we were he called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that he should follow his steps. So he left us an example that we should follow after his footsteps. Go ahead. Who did not see, neither was guile found in his mouth. Nor was deceit found in his mouth. Go ahead. Who when he was revived, revived not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself 
to him that judges righteously. He committed himself to the most high God that judges righteously. Go ahead. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes he were healed. You see that thing? By his side, he says, he bear our sins in his own in his own body, meaning when he died on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. So guess what? The Lord is going to give us stripes. He's going to punish us. He's going to chastise us. He's also going to strengthen us. By so doing, guess what? We is for the benefit of our nation because we love our nation. We're putting our lives on the line for the benefit of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what's going on. That's what the Lord is saying he will do for us. You understand? He did that for us. Guess what? We must do that for our nation. Understand that. Get that in Matthew 10, verse 38 now. Matthew 10, verse 38. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. You see what Christ is saying? He says, he that take, taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. What is he saying? Is it talking about your trials and tribulations? No, 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 no. It says your cross. What happened on the cross? Christ died. He was sacrificed. He was murdered. He was killed on the cross. He says we also must do the same. We must, guess what? The ultimate sacrifice that we have to make, we have to take our cross and follow after him. That's some heavy stuff, brothers. That's some heavy stuff. Sisters, you got to pay attention to this thing. Because these are the men that you're going to be married to. Men that will give their lives for this truth. Understand that. Give me, keep, keep reading, read verse 39. Verse 39. He that findeth life shall lose it. And he that loseth life for my sake shall find it. He's telling you right there. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Meaning what? You reject this truth, you go back into the world to save yourself, quote unquote, you say. But he says, and he that what he that loses his life for my sake shall find it in the kingdom, eternal life, rulership of all nations on earth. But you lose your life in this truth. Guess what? As a sacrifice, he says you're gonna find it, just like he did. Watch this, wisdom of Solomon 4, verse 1. You know what? Before you get there, give me Revelation 6 and 9. Let's start there. Revelation 6 and 9. Read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 9. Go ahead. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Okay, so the fifth seal, that's where we're in now. We are in the fifth seal. Okay, go ahead. And they cried out, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true? Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? He says, how long? How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Meaning we want vengeance. The spirits that died kept keeping the commandments. They speak to the Lord. Okay? So that's why they are asking me. Go ahead. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. You see what they are saying? It says that they should rest yet for a little season. That little season is now when the Lord is sealing the 144,000. You understand? The Lord is sealing us. The elect of Israel being sealed. That's the season we're in. Until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. So guess what? It says, we are going to be killed in this truth. Watch this. Not all, not all is not, not everybody going to be put to death. Okay. Get that in Matthew 23 verse 34. The book of Matthew, chapter 23 verse 34. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify. 
You see and that? some of them. And hold on. And some of them. And some of them he shall kill and crucify. Go ahead. And some of them shall he scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. You see what he's saying? Some of them, not all of them, some of them. Give me John 16 and 1. Because guess what? We're going to be persecuted for keeping the, the, for applying the laws of God and standing stiffly for the name of the Lord. Watch this. You understand? We pray to the Lord to give us strength to be able to withstand in that evil day. Read that. John 16 and 1. The book of John, chapter 16, verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. You see what Christ is warning us. He said, listen, these things are spoken unto you that don't be offended by what I'm about to say. Go ahead. They, they shall put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the hmm. time cometh that whosoever killeth will think that he doeth, will think that he doeth, he doeth good saving. For said, the book of John, chapter 16, verse 2. They shall put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time coming that whosoever killeth will think that he doeth God's saves. You see that? So Christ says, don't be offended of all these things because if the time will come when they will put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. That's what the apostle Paul was doing when he was not in his right mind, when he thought he was doing good, you understand? So, so it is today in these last days. These are things that will begin to take place upon this earth. You understand? Go ahead. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. They have not known the Most High God, nor have they known Christ the Messiah who died for us. Now give me wisdom of Solomon 4 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 1. Better no, no, chapter it three, is to have children. Wait, wait. Chapter 3, verse 1. Excuse me, sir. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God. And they shall not torment, touch them. So the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God. No torment will touch them. The torment is the fire and brimstone. The lake of fire. Go ahead, watch this. Verse 2. In the sight of the unwise, they seemed to die, and their departure is taken from this. You see what he's saying? He says, In the sight of the unwise, those that don't keep the commandments, nor understand what the Bible is saying, he says, They seem to die, but, and their departure is taken from misery. Watch this. Give me that in First Timothy. No, Second Timothy 4, verse 6. The Apostle Paul, he made mention of this thing. Second Timothy, chapter 4, verse 6. Read that. Second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. So now the Apostle Paul was saying, listen, I'm about to be taken and be put to death. You understand? He says, and for now, for I am now ready to be offered. Hmm. This is some heavy stuff right here. Because he was going to be taken and be killed. He says, I'm ready to be offered. Look at that word right there he's using. He says, ready. So we need to be able to get to the level of faith where we can comfortably say these things that our forefathers said. Because why? We are deeply rooted in the laws of God. Read that again, verse 6. Second book of Timon, chapter 4, verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Now that's heavy right there. That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay? Watch this. Go back. Wisdom of Solomon 3. Read verse 2 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 2. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and their departure mm -hmm. is taken for easy. That's why the Apostle Paul, I'm ready to what? To be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Go ahead. And they are going from us to be at a destruction, but mm. they are in peace. Because the souls of the righteous never die. That's what the people don't understand. The righteous never die. Go ahead. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet mm. 
is their hope full of immortality. You see that? It says, for though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. Go ahead. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. Mm. For God proved them and found them with himself. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. God proved them and found them worthy for himself. Watch this. Come on. As gold in the fence as he tried it and received mm. it as a bent offer. Read that again, verse 6. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 6. As gold right. in the fence has he tried it and received it as a bent offer. What does that mean? When we die in this truth, the Lord says, he received us as a bent offering. You understand? The Lord receives us as a bent offering. So guess what? The Lord is satisfied with, with, with that. The same way the Most High God was satisfied with that, the Lord also is satisfied with that. Why? Because we stand stiffly for the name of the Lord. So we need to pray, brothers and sisters, that we get to that level of faith where we can be able to understand clearly what our forefathers were saying what they went through for this gospel. You understand? I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the Most High God. All praise to the Lord this day. Okay? Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had sub said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as a drink, and in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord with him, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth, drinketh with, eateth and drinketh the nation himself, not descending to his body. For this cause, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord.